was up. No, because it's not even um, Wednesday for me. I'm still Tuesday. And even after it rolls over, um, even after it rolls over, party rules apply. It's still went, it's still Tuesday until I go to sleep. So there you go. Um, but we are taking tomorrow off actually. Um, hey snappy. Um, oh God, that's, let's see. Wrong one. <laughs> so everybody knows annoyed Jew is somebody we know, whether they want to reveal themselves or not. Hey, Skoru. Um, yeah, uh, we are taking tomorrow off. We're going to do a good movie night on Discord. But as I said, it's not Wednesday for me. It's not even the day of the protest for me. So it's that simple. Um, I don't think it's going to do much anyway. Um, <laughs> ah, fucking rev, it doesn't matter. No worries. Um... Actually, somebody put something in chat. I need to test something. Somebody just say something in chat. I need to test my timing on a, on the delay. So I need to watch something. So just type. Perfect. Good. Cool. Um, thank you kindly. Um... I, I, I queued up the I, I, I fixed it the uh, I fixed it, 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 it I fixed the delay between the um, on screen chat and your guys's chat so you're not seeing the, what's happening on screen prior to what comes into your feed I still have a six second delay on everything so I can pull anything that I, I need to pull that I catch um, but yeah that was uh, Hey, Puka. Um, I had a fucking productive day. Um, I got a bunch of shit done. I got a bunch of shit done. Um, I mean, that and it helps that I keep a schedule. Your guys' notifications don't really matter as long as you know the schedule. Um... So, yeah, that too. Um, but yeah, no, I had a I had a super productive day around the house. Like, I mean, I'm still this is afternoon for me. I woke up six p.m. something like that. It's when I finally got out of bed. I woke up a few times, but yeah, it was about six p.m. when I actually got up. Um, so this is sort of afternoonish for me. Um. And yeah, I got a bunch of fucking shit done. Got, I actually I got stretch. Like I woke up, I did stretches. I got like, I got the body loosened up properly instead of fucking just dumping into stuff instead. Um, and I got uh, the room next door to here. Um, I'm I'm sort of redoing entirely, so I'm emptying everything out of it. Um, got all of the trash for the fucking house taken out, got multiple, three loads of laundry done, got a bunch of production equipment stored away in the garage, um, got, a, got the water distiller serviced, got some food prep done. Like, you know, I've had a pretty productive morning. Um, so, which is not normal for me <laughs> by any means. Um, how's everybody else though? Cause most of you are probably at the end of your day to some degree or another. Um, how is everybody else? Um, as you can see, the door is open. Um, it's it's a nice hey sometime. It's a nice day out. Um, it's been you know it's a little humid, which for this part of the world is actually nice. Um, just gotta take off the uh, the boot as it were. Oh, it's got a figure eight wrap on it and then laced up it's very much akin to like a ski boot 
um, it, that was my first uh, impression of this brace was, oh, it's like a ski boot. Um, there we go. Great stream, battle, uh, battle Pisco. I don't know who the fuck Pisco is. Scott. I don't know if I'm supposed to know who they are or whatever, but glad you had a good stream. Um, oh. This fucking brace, though. I had to, like, I've got, like, felt pads and stuff that I, I had to put in because, dude, it's, <laughs> like, it, there is literally no padding here between the, the plastic runners for the bracing and your, like, right here. It just rides right on it. So, yeah, I had to customize some stuff. Um, I'm gonna do a very lengthy, uh, a very lengthy project of finally getting my room clean. Caboose. So we're kind of doing the same thing. Um, I mean, I'm emptying that entire room out. Um, I'm redoing my bedroom basically. Um, I'm putting a bed in there for one. I bought a new bed and I'm getting a new mattress. Um, maybe a month from now or so. Um. And yeah, so I took, I'm taking basically everything out of that room and, uh, Caboose, I found a bed that in a mat a bed and a mattress that works for me. It's a low bed. It's, um, it doesn't have box springs. I'm just going to do, a uh, like mattress. It's, uh, it's a pad. It's a pad still. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change it up a little bit, but yeah, basically. And for all intents and purposes, it's still kind of on the floor. Um, queen. Um, I, I have been sleeping in a queen size bed my entire life. Um, I'm exhausted and moving house this weekend. Oh God, snappy. I hate fucking moving. Um, so seeing, I, I grew up moving basically. Um, so seeing the world catch on fire while other parts flood and make me think we should probably do something about this global warming shit. I, yeah, I don't, that's, that's all made up some dumb. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, fake news. Um, almost 3 a.m. here, so I'll be up for another couple hours. I'm coming tonight. Uh, night owl. Um, um, yeah, skeptic. I've been sleeping in a queen bed my entire life. Um, my mom put me in a crib apparently for less than a month, um, when I was a baby. And I tossed and turned and fucking was so rambunctious in the middle of the night. Like, I didn't sleep through the night anyway. Um, that she just, they had like the crib was in the guest bedroom that had the queen bed. Anyway, they ditched the crib and just put me in the middle of the queen bed. I have literally slept my entire life in a queen size bed. So it's, it's what I'm comfortable in. Um, let's see queen team. <laughs> Right. Fuck yeah, Crystal. Um, throwing away so much shit, just old crap I don't use anymore. That's keeping because I'm sure I'll use it someday. And I decided that's been here for 10, 15 years. I'm going to use it. Dude, caboose. Oh, caboose. Um, yeah. I've got, I've got a, a sort of like, I've got drawers full of old IT gear, like cables that of standards of cable that we do not use anymore. Like there's no gear out there that, that I'm probably ever going to work on that would use these standards. I've got, I mean, literally just drawers full of shit. So I'm like, I can't bear to part with it. I can't bear to part with it. I'm just going to have somebody else do it one of these days for me. Just go in, deal with it. I can't do it myself. Um, so I feel, I feel you caboose. I've got, um, I've got a box that I've had since I was 14. 14, 13, 13 going on 14. That box got packed and the stuff in it has been with me since then. Yeah. Um, I tried more than once. The stream isn't working for me. I'll check in later. Hopefully Twitch is just being weird. I uh, hope you have a great stream, Kai. Oh, I'm sorry, Karina. Uh, I built a loft bed with a six inch memory foam twin XL on a sheet of plywood. Yeah, Rev, basically. Um, it's, I mean, what more do you need? It would be nice if Firefox would do as it told. Uh, when I was born, I was too large for the crib when I got home from the hospital. Mar fans, right? Yeah. That are you just a fatty, Scott? No, I know you got the Mar fans going on. Any idea of a decent mattress for someone that's just a spinal injury? Artie, Mar uh, Artie Mick, um, I mean, hashtag not a doctor, hashtag not medical advice, 
see a medical professional, get onto the floor. Caboose, uh, I had back issues. Caboose has had back issues. And I did, it, like, Caboose did what, like, I said to do. And his stuff is sort of finding its way to an end. I um, So get on the floor. Um, get a pad, get a foam pad, get a latex, a natural latex foam pad. Um, and just do it up like a, a mattress. And... Um, sleep on that for a while yeah you need support that that has always been my go-to when i dealt with i i i had a bed for i mean I've, you know always dealt with that sort of shit um yeah caboose is doing the natural latex as well i'm telling you like fuck mattresses mattresses are fucked um get a natural latex pad yeah um, that's, it's, I, at least, at least two people out of this community have had back issues and gone that route and straightened it out. Um, queen size bed for a baby. That doesn't sound safe unless there's like bars around the bed. Skeptic, I'm here. I survived. Um, hey Gemma. Um, I hope your respective days are going well. Yeah, Gemma, Gemma, Gemma reaching out into the past uh, no, and myself reaching into the future to speak to Gemma. Uh, Gemma, 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 Gemma. How, 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 how? Um, you should have seen the inventory purge my dad did a few months ago. Old tech is fucking crazy. Dude, I'm telling you, Caboose, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, freaking hate box springs. Yeah, I know, right? Six inches at birth. Jesus Christ. Fabian. And Scott. Like that fucking wow. Um I didn't get a queen size bed until I was fifteen. My parents wouldn't buy me the essentials until very late in game. Eh, and then it happens. Uh, we need to fix the homeless issue in America. I mean Sunshine, that'd be great. Um fucking I didn't get a queen size till college. Um yeah, I I I mean we know I'm bougie and I've been spoiled, right? Like come on. Of course I grew up in a queen bed, <laughs> queen size bed. Um eh, no worries. Good on you, Karina though. Um you say I was driving us all homeless tent in the highway that says fuck. Dude, sunshine. I mean, we could just for the price that it costs for uh, emergency room visits for the houseless population in most states, you can literally just buy apartments and give them to them unconditionally. It's what Utah has done. It's what Finland did. It's what Utah has it's made a go of. It's literally cheaper just to fucking house the homeless and get them off the streets. Straight up. Um... Slept on, I sleep on a Casper on the floor. Nothing has ever been better. Weird when a girl comes over, though. Yeah, yeah, Scott, that's that's always an interesting thing. But no, seriously, like, the, the support of a solid floor with a, 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 de a good pad, like foam. I'm sorry. I'm an advocate for natural latex with a natural latex foam pad on, like, just a solid surface. Can't do much. Uh, can't do much worse than that. Mattresses are a fucking scam crazy markups. They are. Um... Hardwood floor a lot. It makes me sore and tired. Yeah, don't sleep on a hardwood floor. Um, Five-inch cotton pad on top of a three-inch latex pad. And it's literally the most comfortable bed I've ever been in. <laughs> Caboose. Uh, I sleep on the I slept on the floor as a kid, and I swear it was more comfortable than having a bed. Yep. Uh, doing okay here in hashtag Twitch Do Better Land. See, Gemma, it's not uh, it's not Wednesday. It's not it's not that day for me even. And party rules apply until I go to sleep. That day doesn't happen, and we're taking tomorrow off. So, you know, technically don't cancel me. Hashtag I'll get there eventually. Hashtag disrupted sleep patterns. Um, I've only had a twin since I was 13. Oof. Yeah, I couldn't sleep in a twin. Uh, even shared that twin with my ex cuddle, uh, cuddling size. Oh, Jesus Christ. Off me. Um, reject mattresses. Return to sleeping on trees, says Viva. Uh, housing the homeless also pays itself back in the long run. I know, right? Uh, I like hammocks, but not a lot, uh, not all the time. Uh, hammocks are uh, like uh, for a yard. I don't like sleeping in hammocks. I don't like a, a nap in a hammock is fine, um, but hammocks are for a yard. Like a nice summer evening with a hammock in your front or backyard, sipping a nice cold brew tea, hanging out with friends after a day of fucking around and just swinging in the hammock and just drifting off a little bit. That's what a hammock is for, in my opinion. Um, a 
I've always said queen's, queen bed, the best it is. Um, my husband and I shared a twin bed for years. Pass. Um, yeah, fair enough, Gemma. Um, they reject modernity, get rid of the mattress, embrace rock. Uh, if we pay our taxes, didn't all uh, if uh, if our taxes didn't all go to the fund the military, we'd have plenty of, uh, for a lot of things. Well, actually, half of it goes to fucking like our bullshit medical system when all is said and done, really. And then, you know, it's basically our our bullshit healthcare system and our bullshit military industrial complex that's bleeding us dry as a nation. That's that's you want to know where our money is going to. It's our bullshit healthcare system that needs completely reworking, and it's our bullshit military industrial complex that. Also, I mean, I just uh, I posted it earlier today. I don't. Um, let's see. Um, see if I can find it really quickly. Um, So supposedly, and again, because uh, uh, I know it's going to be Scott, I, I don't, I cannot verify the, I, I have no, I cannot verify the veracity of these numbers. There is no way for me to, um, but this is being reported by uh, the Times and the Sunday Times. Um, this is what we left behind. Okay, so... This is from the GAO. Twenty two thousand one hundred and seventy four Humvees, eight thousand trucks, one hundred and sixty two thousand forty three radios, six hundred and thirty four M one M one one M one one seventeens, one hundred and fifty five MMX Pro mine proof vehicles, sixteen thousand thirty five night vision goggles and devices, one hundred and sixty nine M one one three armored personnel carriers, three hundred and fifty eight thousand five hundred and thirty assault rifles, four hundred uh, forty two thousand pickup trucks and SUVs, one hundred twenty six thousand two hundred ninety five pistols. 64,363 machine guns and 167 artillery pieces. 33 M, uh, MI-17 helicopters, 33 UH-60 uh, Blackhawks, 43 MD-530 helicopters, 4 C-130 transports, 23 Embraer MB-314A29 Super Tucano planes, 29 Cessna 20, uh, 208s, 10 Cessna AC, uh, AC-208s strike, uh, strike aircraft. And this is generally where they were. And this is sort of like, you know, yeah. So again, I can't, I cannot verify the veracity of those numbers. There'd be no fucking way for me to. Um, but that sounds like we're going to have to replace a whole lot of gear. Hmm. I wonder whose po a paycheck that'll come out of. Um, so. Yeah, like, I mean... Is it? It's just sort of mincing words at that point, isn't it, Scott? Like, you know, fucking, it went from us to them to fucking them. We left it behind. Um, yeah, the, the well, they were supposed to blow a whole. They were they were supposed to disable a whole bunch of stuff, but they didn't with the weapons for sure. Um, Do we leave it? Leave it for the Afghan troops or sell it to someone I've heard about so the American hardware is just U.S. made but we didn't own it anymore. Uh, military that could leave so much behind is one that's criminally overfunded. Now Congress wants to give the military more billions. Um, yeah, Gemma, and then we have to buy new ones. Um... Yeah, Scott. As I said, supposed to. I've seen this. I've seen some of the same videos you have. It's like um, that Blackhawks turbine is f firing, and the blades are turning. That means the electronic control, the command and control system, was not burned out via debt cord, which used to be the the standard policy, right? Like a lot of that gear had emergency. Um, disabling tech in it. Like, you basically pull the cord and a whole bunch of the electronics and necessary equipment just fries itself and boom and that sort of stuff. So, 
yeah, like it, it seems no. <laughs> um, luckily, the C130s were not AC130. <laughs> where would they, um, where where would they find like uh, the fucking ordinance for an AC130? Um, up uh, Russia, Russia, China, Iran. Never mind. Yeah, AC130s go, brrr. dude. They're they're impressive. Um, I have a question. How would I DM you? Um, I mean, it depends what the question is about. If it's just a generalized question, just ask me. If it's something that literally needs, um, like, some level of uh, 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 non-broadcast to it, um, send it to a mod. Um, Karina, um, you see... You see a mod in chat. Karina's in chat right now. Send it to a mod. My DMs are closed um, for security purposes. Send it to a mod and Karina will get it to me no problem. And if I need to reach out, I'll just reach out to you. And then we can establish communications. Um, Turkey. Okay, cool. Um, good to know, Scott. That's where that shit goes. Uh, Karina, um, um, it, it, Karina said, I'm not sure how I feel about y'all leaving them. Part of me thinks, well, finders keepers when you wage war, it's, it's so much bigger of a pattern than that. We, we, we wanted to leave that behind. Like, not we, but we. That's, that's part of, like, our 12D military industrial complex chess shit that we do. We wanted to arm the region, I'm sure, on some level. Some level. I don't want to be the conspiracy theorist here. I'm not going to go down the fucking rabbit hole of that bullshit. But the fact of the matter is, is that we do have a pattern of this. We arm regions. Um, we rile them up. We arm them. And then we show up 10 to 20, 30 years later. And we're like, oh, something must be done about this. Ugh. So... Yeah, it's kind of, um... <clears throat> it's kind of what we do. We've done it with the Soviets. We've done it with... It's, it's, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. Um, who's left behind this China have a difficult time? Hey! Graveyard of Empires. Broke the Enigma machine and then sold it to our allies. Yeah, it's... I mean, the F-35s that we sell, um right now all have drm in them like that's a thing um you just um when when like australia fires up an f-35 it dials home via a satellite connection to us and asks for authorization to turn itself on the f-35s we sell have drm imagine buying a multi-million dollar piece of hardware that has to call home to the u.s for it to turn on yeah. So, uh, I mean, it kind of, I mean, the Afghan army really isn't his fault, right, Scott? It, fuck this. Scott, do you want to just come on the air? <laughs> like, fuck it. <laughs> just, this would be easier. Um, this would be easier to have this military conversation. Because the left, the leftists aren't fucking prepared for this shit. Um. Hey, what's up? All right. Um. Oh, shit. There we go. Um. All right. Let me pull that. All right. Um. All right. Scroll that all the way down. Like, I mean, most of the, if most of that gear was from the Afghan army, I mean, we can't really throw that one at Biden. We can throw a lot of shit at Biden, but I mean, wouldn't that have been Bush and Trump? Yeah, that armed I, those I mean, <clears throat> I mean, really, you just got to look at it as the state apparatus, right? Like the prison military industrial complex. I mean, because you can hear it from Biden in his latest speech. He's saying like, oh, all of the advisors told me that this is what we had to do, right? It's like all of the advisors told you to fucking close Bagram, like a defensible fucking air, air, air base that like, you know, had the ability to move C-130s out regularly. Like it all had to be done in Kabul. Like that's bullshit. And all the generals knew it was bullshit, but they were working together to ensure that this, this turned into a giant shit show. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, this was like, you know, we can, I mean, we can't really put that at Biden's feet um, just because we've been arming the Afghan army for fucking years now. Um, so a lot of that gear goes back a couple of presidencies, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I mean, do you want to start with the fucking Saudi Arabia doctrine with fucking Dwight D. Eisenhower? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where do you start? Yeah, like, it, it's... It, this is why, like, you know, people, like, oh, President X. <sighs> like, I mean, really, uh, sure, we can throw some shit at presidents, but they're, it's a machine. It's a Did machine. Did you hear his speech? No. His speech was a pro-war speech almost the entire time. Of course it was. I mean... He, he like specifically he, talked about fighting terrorism in the Middle East, in Syria, and Somalia. Yeah, he's, he's and, never been anti-war. Like, right, but it's just hilarious. It's like anyone that thinks that this like withdrawal was done so horribly because of government incompetence. It's like, mm, if there's one place the government's competent, it's it's the military. Okay. Um. <sighs> Just yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Universal Elements Gaming, um, get in my Discord server and um, give me. It, it might be a couple of days before I'm available to you. Um, or Karina, if they're not here still, Karina, just send this message on. Tell them to get in the fucking Discord server and um, like just tag me or something so I can fucking friend them. And then it may be a couple of days till I get to them, but I can help them with that. Um, hey, okay. Universal's still here. Yeah, like, just jump in Discord and I'll help you. Um, I, I, of course, of course the apparatus is going to continue doing what the apparatus does, right? Like, this is, I'm not, mm -hmm. what, what am I, fucking 12? Like, come on. I've seen this, I've seen this cycle at least twice in my life. Right, like this is this is a yeah. Yeah, this is a you know a fit ten fifteen year pattern that we follow, and it just like that, <laughs> thanks for the follow Universal, um, yeah it's it's a ten fifteen year pattern we we follow and we're just we're cycling back like a few years ago my friends IRL and I started joking like what is this the eighties again, like <laughs> you know right like it was it was all too way too familiar. It's like this is this is just you know history may not repeat but it sure as fuck rhymes, um, right? So you know yeah it, it's honestly it's like you know okay so we'll be we'll be operating in the region just not in that part of the region, <laughs> which is you shift yeah, the pieces no, I mean, you move like the pieces you to, around you have to compare it's like okay was was the Afghan army's munitions and and equipment um, an intentional thing. And that's kind of why I brought up ACC Picatinny, right? Because if 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 the Biden administration is currently paying three hundred and fifty million dollars to arm rebel groups in the Middle East, well, then then why I feel like the burden of proof at that point is for them to prove to me that this withdrawal that ended with them arming the living fuck out of the Taliban wasn't on purpose. Like you have the burden of proof, I think of proving that it actually was an accident when your other actions are arming rebel groups. I, I mean, I, I would default to that status anyway, outside of everything, just because our default modality of operation has always been to arm rebel groups, right? Like that's, right. that's what we do. <laughs> we arm rebel groups. We've dude, the fucking army rangers specialize in dropping behind enemy lines. It's speaking foreign languages so they can converse with and train and arm rebel groups. The CIA Green sells uh, Green sorry, Berets. the Green Berets. Yeah, the fucking um, the CIA sp sells weapons to ed group X so they can arm group Y. Right, like that's Whoa. oh Trump stopped that. Okay, mm, sure. He absolutely did. And then the Pentagon picked up deals doing it the next day. <laughs> That's just how much of an incompetent dumbass he was. I, I, is that like he actually wanted to stop that? And they were like, okay, and just pay no attention. We'll feed your ego and the Pentagon will get it taken care of while you're not paying attention. I, I did the you get all your news from Tucker Carlson. You don't actually know what's going on in your own fucking administration. It's a machine. It's a machine that has operated 
with or without. And you can go back to fucking Eisenhower for the warning, um, even though he was a huge component of it. Um, Mm -hmm. but you can go back to Eisenhower for the the infamous warning that like, Hey, you know, this is a fucking machine that profits from war and we just built the world's biggest version of it that's ever existed. So you might want to keep a couple of eyes on it along the way. And we just completely like, Oh, shiny. Um, yeah. What was it? Um, Osama bin Laden's former head of, uh, head of chief of security, like his number two guy, just there's video of him now being back in Afghanistan. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is, like I said, history may not rhyme, but it sure as fuck repeats. And if you're over a certain age, like if you're under a certain age, you, you you have your suspicions, but if you're over a certain age, we've lived this before. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, if you're like Scott in my like age category, you've literally lived this cycle before. This is not new. This isn't the first time this has happened. It's not, Yeah, so to go down conspiracy theory lane just a little bit, here's what I think is likely happening, right? You've got two factions, right? ISIS-K wasn't supposed to be in Afghanistan, right? They, I don't think the administration planned on ISIS um, being in Afghanistan because they thought that the Taliban would be a countervailing force, right? You have all of these deals being made with the Taliban. You've got thousands of people being released from prison to bolster the Taliban numbers, right? And I think what is probably occurring... Right. If I had to have my conspiracy theory hat on. Right. Um, What you have to understand is that ISIS is very different from the Taliban because the Taliban, although they're both Sunni Salafist. Right. ISIS and ISIS K is much more concerned with establishing like the global Global. Islamic caliphate. Yeah. And the Taliban is much more, much more concerned about selling opium, selling children into slavery selling women in the sex trade, but they're very nationalistic. And so what I think is happening is the administration wants to arm the Taliban because they feel like they can deal with the Taliban because the Taliban will stay put in their own fucking place. Yeah. And ISIS will just do wild shit and bomb people because they're like, you know, fuck Afghanistan. We're here to fucking take over the world with the Islamic Caliphate. And Taliban's like, mm, we've kind of gotten used to this capitalism thing kind of working. And we kind of like selling opium to pharmaceutical companies in Germany and like it being turned into legitimate streams of profit and um, and people turning a blind eye when we sell children into sex slavery. And so I think the state is trying to arm the Taliban to to wipe out ISIS K um, to ensure that that region is like a nice controllable set of warlords that we can throw some money to from time to time. And they'll kind of like they won't be our puppet, but they'll stay placed in their own little area without causing too many problems. No, I see. I see. I saw that near immediately that we started legitimizing the Taliban. Like as soon as ISIS K did what ISIS fucking K did, right? The first thing that that sort of the tonality shifted on a fucking dime. Yeah, it was like we're gonna bomb the fuck out of you. We don't care if children get bombed. Like we're gonna fuck you up. And it was like, what about the Taliban? Well, I mean, they're working with us. Yeah. It's okay. They they became the immediate like this. This is Mujahideen. What three point oh? Um, four point oh. What are we up to for Mujahideen at this point? Um, I know, man. Yeah, like I, this is it's it's three point oh Africa? or greater. Like, the number keeps going up. Yeah, like this is this is Mujahideen all over again. That were like, you know what, like, fuck them. You, you, fuck you, but fuck them more. So here, yeah, gun Biden, goes to you. Biden's not running the country. Ron Klain is running the country. Um, And all of our dumbass chuds will buy it all over again. Yes, cat. This is, this is, mm-hmm. dude, this is, this cycle has been going on for generations. <laughs> it works. It works. They, it, it works. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's 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 Ron Klain is the guy you got to be paying attention to, right? Corporate lobbyist who's been in and out of the White House administration staffs and is the current chief of staff. It's not fucking Biden running shit, right? Biden just does what he's fucking told. Um Yeah, he he's like he's been um he's been chief of staff to like what, two vice presidents and like he was in the Obama uh White House as well. Mm -hmm. Um he's he's one of those fixtures. That's Mm -hmm. that's and then when he's not a White House chief of staff somewhere, he's working in corporate lobbying. Yeah, oh yeah. He uh Georgetown, Harvard, 
Um, he's one of those. He was uh, he was uh, law clerk for oh god, um, White. He was, uh, yeah, he was a law. Uh, he was a law clerk for uh, Supreme Supreme Court Justice uh, Byron White, as well. Mm-hmm. So this is this is like you know Georgetown, Harvard, Supreme Court. Um, fucking. Um, he was he was involved in the Clarence Thomas nomination somehow too that I I forget. Mm-hmm. Um, he was involved. He was also involved in some oil lobbying and shit too. He's got he's got connections with big oil. Clinton, Gore, Obama, mm-hmm. Biden. Right. Like this, this, he's a fixture. It's, it's right. He was one of the big guys that was operating the whole Solyndra thing. You, you, you younger lefties will definitely not remember that <laughs> the $535 million given to a solar panel company that, uh, magically went under and $535 million of American taxpayers just happened to go. And that company just happened to give a couple million to, uh, Obama. Barack Obama's campaign Obama. fund. Yeah. This is this is one of the Obama ones. Fucking, it was a money laundering yeah. scheme. <laughs> it was, it was a, I mean, they all fucking it was do a, it. It was a bribery slash money laundering scheme. That's that's just sort of how that worked out. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, too big to fail. We got to bail out the solar panel companies based mostly in China. I don't the solar that panel company that doesn't fail, do like, anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they didn't really do anything. Like they, they that's the thing, is like that you know, um they were they were they were uh touted as like the leader in clean energy and like they weren't anything. <laughs> it was just a money laundering slash bribery scheme. They were um I forget when they were founded. They were founded in like two thousand and five on paper or something like that. And by two right. th- by two thousand and eleven they were defunct. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with five, as Scott said, five hundred and thirty-five million in government-backed loans. Poof. Yeah. <laughs> we never got that money back, but uh, plenty yeah. of people walked away with nice bonuses. Um, that's just like the uh, the telecom one. Um, I mean, at least those fuckers are still around. But the four hundred billion dollar telecom scandal. Um, I don't know if I remember that. One. Holy shit! Yeah. Um. So we in 2014 we cut a check. Uh, um. We by the end of 2014 we had paid out 400 billion dollars to Verizon, AT and T, and CenturyLink to finish last mile future proofing fiber optic runs to bring broadband internet to the entirety of this country. Um. And they literally did. Nothing. I'm not kidding you. They didn't dig a fucking trench. They didn't lay a foot. They did fucking AT and T, man. Nothing. <laughs> when we, can we get rid of AT and T? Can we just get rid of AT and T? I think. I know I'm starting to sound like a left wing anarchist, but like I'm just saying, can we fucking get rid of AT and T? Like, yep. Skull dog. Straight up. Couple billion here. A couple billion there. Pretty soon, you're talking about real money. Um. That sounds like an invitation to be nationalized. That's the last thing you want to do. But what we need is like uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so Scott's gonna sound like AT&T the left. AT&T started because it okay. was nationalized. In okay, so Scott's gonna sound like the leftist. I'm gonna sound like the fucking capitalist. Uh, let's we'll trade spots for a second. What you need is actually market competition for that. We've got a series of regulations and fucking uh, codes in place all over states and municipalities and uh, in, in, across this country that dictate that municipal ISPs are illegal. Tennessee's one of the foremost like examples of this happening comcast i believe was the one that fucked them up nashville set up municipal isp uh it, nashville set up a municipal isp that was one of the most competitive in the country that had like 35 dollar a month service which for america is cheap 35 dollar a month service for high speed internet well tennessee made it illegal for municipalities to have isps because comcast lobbied the shit out of their legislators right what you need is co-ops and non-profits and municipal isps you need a, a plethora of competition in that marketplace because isps don't need to be the national scale that people think they do now what i think we should do is probably uh like i don't know how we could do it without fucking like the christian right and the republicans becoming too involved because this is what we need we need the fiber loops and the backbones and the transit uh transoceanic uh connections to be nationalized but we need our government not to get their hands on it because the christian right will block porn in a second like they'll yeah. they'll start oh, yeah. they'll set up the great firewall of America 
overnight. Like that, that will be a thing. They will filter the shit out of our internet. You cannot trust these people. You cannot trust fucking like fucking Mitch McConnell and whoever else to leave the internet untouched as it is. Ironically, the, the massive corporations don't give a fuck. Um, so they, they don't actually filter anything really. Um, but yeah, you need those, those major components to be nationalized but protected somehow and then you need all of the ISPs to be a diverse set of ISPs for regional and local uh, and like uh, locales um, and then you would have a, a really idealized system at least from a, a technical standpoint but, um, but 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 Ted Cruz told me that he's for free speech on the internet yeah I totally believe everything Ted Cruz says um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, God, I got to get my dad in here to talk about AT&T, how much he fucking AT&T. AT &T. Uh, room 642A, uh, I think. Um, uh, I, I, it's been a couple of minutes since I... Um, it may be rooms... Um, let me find it. Uh, I'm sorry, 641A. It's not 642. It's six, room 641A. We've known about it for decades and decades now. Um, that was the NSA fiber split. Um, in San Francisco, um, where the fiber optic literally comes out of the ocean, basically, into the AT&T hub, and there is a split. They, they put in a junction, and in room 641A was the NSA surveillance kit. And so, like, that's straight up. Like, we've, if you cannot trust AT&T. You never could. Um, and while we're going down conspiracy lane, Quest Communications. Quest Communications CEO... Um, ended up in, um, in jail for a while off of some, uh, I forget what the trumped up charges were, um, insider trading and fraud. Okay. Here's the fun fact about, uh, the Quest Communications, uh, CEO, uh, Joseph P. Nacio, Nacio, um, he was the only one out of all of the telecommunications heads that told the U S government and the NSA to go kick rocks. Bring me a warrant, and then you can uh, then you can copy our data. Until you have that, I'm not participating. Congratulations, insider trading and fraud charges. Yeah. Who is the Who is the guy? I can't remember the company because it's been so fucking long. But it was in Citizen for the movie, and it was like a it was like it was something like Lava Bit or something, where like the emails weren't stored server side. And the FBI came to him and told him, well, you have to store the emails because we need access to all of your emails. And he like basically was like, fuck you. I'll just shut down. Uh, yeah. I can't remember. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was lava bit and the NSA fucking was it lava bit. It was lava bit and fucking yes. Yeah, Snowden favored lava bit and they shut down. They did. They revived it, but they shut down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it was, and the reason they shut down was because the FBI said, um, I don't care that you're not storing emails server side. You have to now. You have to change the entirety of your email so that we can have access to all emails used that are supposed to be encrypted. <coughs> and if you tell anybody about it, you'll go to jail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's why the fucking, um, the, the notices come down. Like if, if you guys aren't familiar, a lot of security companies do, um, like warrant notices. And so I can't, I can't tell you I have been served with like a FISA warrant or anything like that. Right. Can't tell you. It's completely illegal to, to tell you that. What I can do is put up a page that says as of, um, as of, uh, as of September 1st, 2021, proudly radical has not been served with any federal, uh, federal notice warrant or paperwork of any type. And then if they do, I can pull that page. It's legal. That's legal. And so that's what a lot of these groups do. If you're familiar with like a lot of OPSEC and security and cryptography companies, they have those sorts of, uh, of bellwether notices and most of them end up disappearing because that's what the U.S. government does. They come in and they're like, yeah, you're going to cooperate. I mean, at least it's not as bad as Europe, to be fair. It is. It is better than Europe. Yeah, it actually is. Um, the UK, the UK uh, intelligence apparatus has access to literally everything in real time, no matter what, n no matter when, always. Um, 
Like if you send an email and you live in the UK, the government is has the ability to read your email whenever they want for whatever reason. Always. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a warrant canary. Um, um, but yeah, um, it's law. Countries you have to a certain amount of logs and data for authorities. Yeah, you know what? Um, it's not the law here. Um, they they strong arm people into it, and this is why I'm an advocate for um, private internet access. Um, PIA. That's my VPN host. Um, I will shill. How do you feel about CyberGhost? I don't. I'll tell you why I shill for PIA for free. Um, And nobody else meets this metric. They're the only one that's been hauled before a federal court twice by the federal government and come out clean. Everybody else, okay. either they haven't had, they haven't been served, and they haven't had that case happen, um, so they're untested, or they've failed. Um, right. PIA is the only one because they they're the renowned um, piracy uh, VPN. Like everybody pirates over PIA. Um, yeah, I mean, I use CyberGhost just because, like, I bought a fucking subscription and I've just been too lazy to switch. I, I, yeah, PIA has been hauled before a federal court twice now um, by the FBI and it, they turn over everything you have and they just come to court with basically like an empty box and they're like, this is what we have. We don't have anything. There's nothing. We don't have logs. We have no mechanism to track any of this. Our system is properly secured and anonymous. There's nothing we can do about it. And so, yeah, they've been tested in federal court, and that's why I, I trust them. Um, and you, they've got all those sorts of crazy payment options. Like, if you really mm. want to go off-grid, like, they can, they can do multiple cryptos, but they also do, like, cash gift cards and shit that you can, like, buy cash at CVS or Walgreens or Walmart and send them the fucking number, and they'll use that as a subscription payment. Like, nice. Yeah, oh, yeah, they'll go, they'll go way dark for you if you want. Um, so, yeah, I... I uh, Scarface from Street Beefs. Interesting. PIA. Oh, was that one of his sponsors? Um, yeah, yeah. Like they're bare knuckle brawling illegally in Georgia, and they're like private internet access. <laughs> PIA is good. They are. Um, it's like it's like PIA and Raid Shadow Legends will sponsor anyone with a pulse. <laughs> uh, I should contact them. Um, I'll fucking show them. Like fucking. You don't. You don't. You don't want to do what Raid makes you do. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm saying PIA, not fucking Raid. Um, I'll show for pill uh, or like PIA. Ridge wallet, Ridge wallet. will be like, do you have a pulse? All right. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> private internet access. Don't let your past haunt you. Um, no, I'll fucking like, Hey, like, um, political activists. Hey, Nixa. Uh, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the host raid thingy. Um, yeah. Like, um, secu- uh, uh, political activists need operational security. And I mean, I have an entire section on my uh, cheat sheet on my website that is uh, under the tech uh, technology section called operational security for the activist, where I talk about some of the stuff like, you know, portions of like half of that cheat sheet is like other people's and it's it's cited, but other people's work. The operational security for the activist section is just handwritten by me. (laughs) Like, that's just here you go. Like, this is what you need to know kind of thing. And it's just bare bones. It's like, you know, beginner stuff, but this is beginner stuff that would secure most activists operation. And so, you know, yeah, there's a section in there for PIA. Like fucking folks secure your ass. Um, yeah, most people do need beginner stuff. See, that's the thing. Beginner stuff for me is basically like intermediate to moderately advanced for most people. I, there's no ego attached to that. It's just, it's decades worth of experience. Um, so, you know, yeah, like VPN and fucking how not, how not to identify yourself once you do secure your, your network and Tor plus VPN and all sorts of other stuff. Um, right. Well, I mean, it's not about being the best. It's about being, you know, better than the rest of the pack, right? Because if the FBI wants your ass, they'll find your ass. Yeah, you know, they've got the resources that no, like no individual can take on the fucking FBI. But if you can, but if you can be better than the other, than the other sheep in the herd, then they're not coming for you because it's too much effort. Yep. It's the same, uh, it's the same concept with most operational security. uh, Like when you're dealing with um, like burglars and shit like that, look, you're never going to fucking 
everything proof your your house. All you want to do is make it too much of a pain in the ass for the dude to break into your house so he moves on to the guy next door. That's it. Like, that's just how it works. Um, so my, what's so, this got to do with Hassan's house? <laughs> uh, what's this got to do with Hassan's house? Oh, Jesus. Beginner stuff. No, a burner phone will not protect you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, leave your phone at home, kids. Um, I don't know what you're doing, and I don't want to know what you're doing. But if you're doing it, leave your phone at home, kids. Um. I like a challenge. Yeah, well, you know, hey, um, everybody needs to practice. Um, let's see. Was there anything else I missed? Oh, uh, Be Over, yeah. What I figured out or understood, the company had skyscrapers all over the U.S. Oh, Be Over actually had a – this This is the second part to something Be Over said. Um, okay. In like 98, I think, I worked for a company that was big in whatever that was with the internet – they had access to billions of dollars of real estate and every phone company ISP was in meetings trying to put towers and get T3 cables into their properties. Tons of big wigs. Yep. Quest CEO company was around for a couple of years, take the money and ran what I figured out or understood. The company had skyscrapers all over the U S the telecoms wanted in to put antennas and cables in the buildings. The company would get the telecom to pay for them. Also get the properties to pay for them too, because they would get uh, be getting these services paid in both directions, but they didn't really sell any goods or services nice that's a little scam they had going on there <clears throat> right fucking ah, it's okay be over i just you know i'll get to them eventually as long as you understand that I, you should give me a little bit to get to your novels i'll get to them eventually um yeah it's i, I just you know it's like come on i i i don't mm, i don't know <sighs> the apparatus is big the apparatus is strong, and the apparatus moves grindingly slow. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really, it's more like the apparatus is inefficient, but the apparatus is also unimaginably large. Yeah. It, it is, it, it, you, I mean, just five eyes alone is, is a technical concept. What like twelve eyes? Or it, there, yeah, eyes? there. Uh, we we did um, uh, we did the the list one day actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it was like <laughs> they're the what they're up to. They're up to uh fourteen. Uh, but no, see, yeah. But there's also <clears throat> also collaborative focused cooperation um and shared housing with um. Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Germany, uh, uh, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Italy, Japan, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and Turkey. So fourteen plus that. Um. So, um. But I mean, just Five Eyes is a concept, like the Echelon program as a concept, right? Like, it is a technical thing to achieve. It requires a level of industrial complex size that is just staggering is from a logistics point of view. And that's just our SIGINT, right? Like that's just signals intelligence. That's just one aspect of it. And it's like, you have any concept how big this fucking machine is, because if you do speak up because nobody really does, like nobody truly understands how big this machine is. It's, there's none of the arms know about the other arms. There's so much compartment, compartmentalized security across the board that honestly, a lot of it is just a black hole. And it, it, when you start thinking about that and you start factoring that into, oh, hey, what are we doing in Afghanistan? What, you know, it's like, look, there is a lot of moving parts here. And the people that you think are in charge aren't necessarily in charge of really much of anything yeah i had a buddy that was on arpnet and um was just like fucking around and like within like two minutes of like being somewhere he wasn't supposed to be his mouse cursor starts moving for him and he gets a phone call yeah uh for those of you <laughs> you know what i mean, like, you, know what I mean? Arp, when you Arp... understand that the state apparatus is that fucking large you're just like jesus fuck what do they have that i don't know about um that would be the advanced re uh advanced research projects agency network um for those of you who don't 
don't know. Um, that's that's basically um, uh, who's is that army? Um, mm-hmm. it's yeah, army. it's army. Um, yeah, that's the army's like DARPA network. Like most people have heard of DARPA, um, but most people don't know about ARPA. Um, so like just there's think, a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, no, basically everybody has their own advanced research projects agency. Like the, and a lot of them don't know what the other ones are doing. Like, well, I mean, that was a big thing about like the nine 11 conspiracy theories, right? It was like once all the data started coming out, right. That was like, we knew about nine 11. Like there's no argument that all of the information when compiled together easily 9-11 absolutely could have been avoided right but the thing is is that like the fbi and the cia and the nsa none of them were even fucking talking to each other so they all had different pieces of the puzzle and like none of them had a complete picture because they're all in like competition with each other um i would go so far as i say competition it's just inherently like paranoia like they're all paranoid as shit Given what they do, they have to be, but it becomes systemic at a certain point and metastasizes and becomes counterproductive. Um, so uh, Siddhartha 26, which, by the way, if you have to add a 26 to your name, chances are it's unoriginal and start over. Um, anarchism did exist in the Stone Age, but as humans evolved and became intelligent, problem 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 so we're three we're not even like a sort of a half sentence um so we're like a half a one and a half sentences in and we have three problems already with this statement but but as humans evolved and became intelligent they created a state what part would you like to pick apart first i mean let's ignore the obvious vocabulary and grammar uh, problems with this statement um right just like in good faith, right? Yeah. Um, we'll start with, I don't know, the fact that anarchism didn't exist in the Stone Age, that that would be anarchy, not anarchism. Just if we're going to do, hey, you know what? This is a prescriptive space, political science, high level discussion. Let's make distinctions and make clear that would have been anarchy, not anarchism. Um, and uh, it extended far beyond the Stone Age into North American inhabitants of this con- uh, continent uh, of this continent up to and including um, the Iroquois League which by the way we copied to create some foundational concepts of our constitution you want to tag in yeah humans evolved right um so modern humans have been around for about 200,000 years and we evolved um, we, we invented writings, you know, formal writings somewhere around 100,000 years ago to 50,000 years ago. Um, then, you know, right. Like we didn't have chiefdoms until maybe 25, 30,000 years ago. But, you know, according to anthropologists today, something like 15,000 years ago. So no human evolution in the brain occurred whilst states were being developed or nation states. Um, and we also, the fact that you're intrinsically tying intelligence and evolution and intelligence, which by the way, those are not, you know, necessarily, uh, correlated. Um, but the fact that you're, uh, you're correlating intelligence with the creation of the state, um, there have been many things that are highly destructive for humanity that we're born of our intelligence just because our intelligence created something doesn't inherently grant it ethical purpose or qualities of morality or goodness that you're ascribing to the state uh sort of you're you're implying with that statement but uh you know hey um i don't think they're here still that or they're, you know, that or they're, they're since furious. I, you like know, I, I figure just one more thing. Oh, right? oh here we go. And I want to, I want to tie his name into it. Right. Um, since you're named Siddhartha, I want to keep in that Eastern philosophy realm and then tie that to, to you saying we've created things that were, you know, not necessarily conducive um, to, you know, f- human flourishment and just quote Robert Oppenheimer 
um, <laughs> when inventing the nuclear warhead. Now I am become death, yeah. the destroyer of worlds. I feel him every time I say that. Like, dude, could you imagine? Could you imagine, like, for that moment? Like, I've become death, destroyer of worlds. Like, holy shit. Like, the, the, the You know, like, as weight. soon as you invent it, like, the second nuke gets dropped unnecessarily, and you're like, what the fuck have I done? Yeah, I just did that. Like, I helped usher in this era of God help us all. Um, they said, a state is necessary for the establishment of rights. I mean, I disagree, but that's not actually a bad argument, right? I mean, it is for, like, people like us that deal with these arguments regularly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the bingo card of, like, you'll just have warlords or whatever. But, like, it's not like a chud argument. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a decent I formulated mean, argument. It's wrong. Yeah, I mean, so first, Siddhartha. I'm going to need you, since we are a prescriptive political science space, I'm going to need you to define rights. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a formalized definitional set. By the way, um, oh, I've been meaning to send you something so you, should, you, should ha so you can have it. Um, okay. And it's, it, it's, it's extraordinarily valuable. Um, there you go. It'll, it'll, it'll take a minute. Um, it's not small. Um, but it's going to come into your DMs. Um, people are too evil to be given so much freedom. I can't even begin to. Okay, so you believe in an intrinsic evil? No, 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 no. He actually believes in technocracy. He thinks that the once the AGI gets invented, the system will be run by 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 robots. Because I have to assume that because if your argument is that people are too evil to be given freedom, th th who 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 holds the power then? Other people who are also evil? The state. Right, you know, which is run by other mm. people that are too evil. Like, so like, I'm assuming you're a technocrat, right? Like you must believe that like, we need to, we need to devote all of our resources into, into the development of artificial general intelligence so that we can all become slaves to the machines. Siddhartha, you're, you're a transhumanist. Yeah. Yeah. Transhumanist. Yeah. That's, that's your only out on this one is if you, if you own being a transhumanist, which by the way I am, um, but um, yeah, like also, he, I mean, Siddhartha, he's had, he was his found meaning of existence, right? Like this is the classical definition of meaning of Siddhartha, right? Um, what is your meaning of existence, Siddhartha? I want to know more about you now. Um, oh God, this reference sheet is actually pretty good. Oh no, that's, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to send you something here. Okay. This is, this is what it costs. Oh, I can't even fucking imagine. Yeah, that's 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 how much that cost. I've I've gotten text college textbooks for free before. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's it. That is, dude, that is the de facto, like s sincerely, like that is it, it, there. There are more academics and professionals and political scientists involved in the creation of that those texts than any other single compendium on the planet. Like that is the go to. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm going to end up reading this and I fucking hate you for that. Yeah. It's, it is, well, it's strap gonna in. It's going to take me like, like it's, three fucking months. It's 4,000 pages. So strap in. Um, yeah. Everybody in like our sort of position should have that text at their disposal. I know. Um, I'm wondering if Siddhartha believes themselves to be e evil. Oh, um, I mean, I'm sure that, like, I mean, the fact that they believe in an intrinsic evil is hilariously um, special. Um, so do you not understand anarchism then? That's, so you think anarchism means chaos, don't you? Because you said a state, dem a state democratic state is accountable and anarchist society will be a nightmare. So you don't understand consensus decision making or approval voting processes. So you don't understand that anarchists often use direct democracy. So you're you're pro democracy but anti democracy. Cool. Or you don't understand anarchism. So which is it? Are you ignorant of are, are you ignorant of anarchism, or do you not trust democracy, but you trust democracy? 
So which which of these processes, which, which, which one of these is it? Because I'm confused at this point. You've got a feedback loop in, uh, in, and a logical fallacy in your argument, and you've got a uh, willful ignorance of some sort. So I just need clarification at this point. I mean, I feel like you're giving people too much credit by saying willful ignorance, right? Like sometimes people are unwillfully ignorant. I think if you're willing to go into a politics category, a politics channel on Twitch and attempt this argument that uh, without actually knowing anything about these concepts, that you are willfully ignorant. All right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to figure it out. I call collective decision making voting for my MPs. That doesn't answer my question. At all. Like, that's apropos of nothing. Oh, Cindy, Cindy Larper. Love the name, by the way. Cindy Larper TV. Um, fucking, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems to be that's what he thinks, but I'm trying to figure it out here. So does he n not understand anarchism or does he somehow trust democracy but not trust democracy at the same time? Because apparently he doesn't understand that anarchists use multiple forms of democracy. So either he's some form of like broken hypocrite or he's just ignorant, which ignorance can be forgiven. Ignorance can be corrected. It can be fixed. But in this instance, I'm, I'm a little... I'm a little lost at this point because he doesn't seem to understand what he's arguing. And for me, going into... Yeah, that's really only a good argument against me, not against you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get, coming into some place like this and attempting this argument seems like, I don't know, a cry for help? <laughs> because, I mean, Pookie, you're out of your depth. I remember when trolls had class. <laughs> I put on my wizard hat and robe. Let's go. Throw some music on in there in the background and wait for our answer. Nixon, no worries. I had a guy come on uh, <clears throat> asking a bunch of Jewish questions. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight. And uh, and so I just put on polka music <laughs> and started asking him, and he got so fucking embarrassed and left. Dude, they're always I, I always um um I always joke about how they're always three questions away from fucking the JC. Like, no, he came in like right off the uh, right off the bat with it, like one question. Nice, nice. I mean, you know, my streams are a little bit more. Uh, was I started playing me some black <laughs> motherland bounce. <laughs> And just started being like, let's go. Let's ask the questions. And fucking black Jews rapping was enough for him to be like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> he just went away on his own. Um, annoyed Jew in chat. I don't know if they want to reveal. Annoyed Jew, do you mind if I reveal your identity? Because you, you do have, like, annoyed Jew is, like, somebody else, actually. Uh, they're just having some fun. Uh, I'm just enjoying anarchy equals freedom equals evil run rampant. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's it's casual okay, cupcake. Anybody can come. Anybody can come in my shit. Yeah, uh, annoyed Jew is casual cupcake. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> they're just they're doing some stuff. That's all. <laughs> they're they're conducting a social experiment, shall we say? <laughs> Just, just be careful when when happy merchants in my chat he comes in every now and then oh fucking so i'm guessing they bailed because they started they started something they couldn't deal with um which i mean if you're if you are running a bingo card and you happen to have cowardly chud on it feel free to mark that box um, I just went and tried to research the company I worked for, telecommunications infrastructure, three years, and they were in business, and it was two guys. They sold for eighty million. I was a temp and rejected the permanent job offer. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good, dude. 
Um, yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, let me, let me check, uh, what was their fucking, oh, it was Siddhartha. I'm like, what's their stupid fucking name? See, this is, these people literally Siddhartha occupy- Siddhartha underscore 26. They, they literally occupy no space in my memory. Like, I, I just, once they're fucking out of, like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Like, they're just gone. Um... Yeah, they're they're still listed in the user uh, user list, but Twitch can take a moment, minute to update that sometimes. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's up, bro? You better be typing a novel, or I mean, just be the cowardly chud that you probably are. Um, but either way, um, so yesterday was the um, the anniversary of uh, Gene Seberg. Um, do you know this story? don't know this story gene no. gene seberg committed suicide after years of harassment intimidation and defamation by the fbi after she gave donations oh, yeah. to the black panther party at the, yeah, at I remember the that direct now. order and behest of j edgar hoover yep hey he's still here uh we got a novel any body which, quote, takes decisions on behalf of the people or holds a position of authority by virtue of a certain function they perform is in a certain degree of concentration of power, which undermines the raison d'etre of anarchism when democratic decision making matures and involves a status form. Hey, congratulations. You don't you don't understand the distinction between delegation and representation. Cool. Um, so we need to like start with like square one with you. Like, you literally don't understand anarchism. Um, and by the way, a, a, a novel is, I mean, you know, in this instance, one, two, three, four sentences. Jesus Christ, a paragraph. Man, give him credit. It's better than the five words. It's true. It's, it, he beat the five word rule. That is true. That is true. All right. So let's, um, I love yellow skill, Doug. Um, that was a whole bunch of words. Um, <laughs> So here's, here's the fundamental. You don't understand the difference between delegation and representation. And in anarchism, we use delegation, not representation. See, it's a bottom-up modality of operation, not a top-down modality of operations. Given that you seem to be um, a statist in nature and that you were probably born into statism and hierarchical thinking, uh, thinking uh, methodologies, you have never experienced a hierarchical organizational structure. So you literally don't know how this, you have no concept of how this can work. It's like explaining i don't know um the ocean to somebody who's never seen the ocean before right like oh most of our planet is covered in water and it's in it it, it just inescapably deep and there's like monsters and shit in there that we don't even know about and you can drown you cannot breathe in it and if you try and drink it yes it's water but it'll kill you right it, it just it's such a foreign concept to you that it will take some steps to actually get you to grasp these concepts as a whole. But here's where I can help you, right? So what you are talking about is top-down representation, which is authoritative. Anarchism uses bottom-up delegation. So what you have is free associative affinity groups. Those affinity groups can be anything or everything. They could be your coworkers. They could be your geographical neighbors. They could be LGBT community. Anybody that has these sort of shared interests in forming um, and shaping power dynamics with each other can form affinity groups, right? Those affinity groups then come together and they can select delegates. Those delegates don't actually have intrinsic power because everything that they do, every step of quote unquote representation that they do isn't actually done on your behalf. It comes back and gets checked against a vote at the grassroots bottom base fundamental level. See, when your representatives go to parliament, they vote on your behalf. Our delegates come back to the populace with the uh, with the proposal, and then we vote on it. See, that's the difference between delegation and representation. They can go and do something and help move the ball along. They can consult experts. They can consult other delegates. They can network and associate with other affinity groups on our behalf. And then they come back with that information to us as a direct democracy, then we get to participate and decide for ourselves. 
which then undermines the very foundational argument of your state. So again, I circle all the way back to you don't understand anarchism and you're talking out of your ass. Welcome, Pookie. Anyway, so how was your night, um, Scott? You had a good stream? Great stream. I was just going to let you deal with that one because we, we, we have different definitions, right? <laughs> but it's your space. I had a great stream. Um, yeah, we talked about the war. We talked a lot about uh, Ivermectin. Uh, a lot of people did not like what I had to say. <laughs> did you see Caboose's meme for it? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, let me, I'll get it on stream in a second. Caboose got some OC. Caboose is our, uh, Caboose is our meme lord. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I basically just kind of like, you know, we went into the research. We went into like the Australian research first and... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so... The fucking, the fucking topical paste. He's <laughs> just eating it. So have you seen the, the Ivermectin subreddit? I saw some of that, that like it got raided by people just like making horse jokes and like oh. horse worm jokes or something. No, it's been turned into horse hentai. Oh, nice. It's, nice. it's all horse anime porn and shit now. Yeah. Like they just, but yeah, we just did it. We did a little it. bit of a deep dive for like an hour where I just kind of pulled up the research and explained like, look, these radical fucking people on the right, like these magatards that are like, this is amazing. Like, don't know what they're talking about. These, these fear mongers in the media that work for corporations that say that like it's going to fucking harm you or something if your doctor prescribes you fucking ivermectin don't know what the fuck they're talking about like the real truth of the matter is the data is currently inconclusive and it might help attack some of the protein structure that uh, that SARS-CoV-2 needs to uh, replicate right and so if your doctor fucking says to take it, take it. And if your doctor doesn't say to take it, don't go to a goddamn veterinarian trying to find some shit that's not made for humans so you can ingest yourself with some crazy shit. A uh, tractor supply took it offline. <laughs> um, and regional distributors, uh, uh, regional stores, like some of the retail stores, I literally saw a photo. They put up signs saying, we require to see a photo of you with your horse. <laughs> yeah you want to buy it show us your horse with you next to it well i mean ivermectin might still be prescribed to someone who's been vaccinated right um at the end of the day like just do what your doctor says and make sure you have a good doctor horse horse passports um <laughs> But yeah, it was one of those one of those radical centrist takes that nobody likes. <laughs> if I were so if Siddhartha said if I were in an anarchist state, I would have totally shot you. Well, congratulations. You just earned yourself a report and a ban. Threats, harms, uh stating he'd have shot me. That's fun. Um I mean, what's to stop you from doing it now? Like, like, if that's how you are as an individual, like. Bye, Pookie. Oh, I love the death threat, Chuds. Fucking, it's funny how comfortable statists are with threatening your, uh, threatening people's lives. That seems to be. Well, I mean, that's what the passing of every law is, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you think about it, they've kind of been. I think. I mean, ironically enough, one of the best, and I know this is, you know, you probably won't agree, but ironically enough. I think one of the best fucking pieces on understanding state violence was written by a fucking white supremacist gay dude, Jack Donovan. It is, it is, it is a, a crazy character, but the, but he wrote an essay called violence is golden. 
and it's actually a really good essay on like on like people like normies understanding how violence is connected to the state apparatus um oh jesus christ okay that's in spanish i'm like what the fuck portuguese he translated Yay. it um it's in english too portuguese spanish and french um i mean okay so i mean i i disagree with some of his premises but for sure for sure but it's a great like introduction to like the normie that doesn't understand that like the laws they ask for are really just state violence yeah yeah and i do we, i do agree he's got a very good clear way of saying violence is the final answer to the question or what else like that's that's you know if you don't pay your taxes we uh we will issue an eviction order for your uh for your premises and we will seize your assets well what if i don't let you seize my assets what if i don't let somebody on my property well then we will send the police well what if i don't let the police well they will use force well what if i counter with their force then we will kill you right it's it's a good piece it really is but jack donovan's a fucking wacko man He's one of those people in, that he was in Virginia and like went out into the yeah, fucking he's, woods he's, with okay, a bunch so of white supremacists. I do, I do know the fucking male supremacy thing. Yeah, yeah. He's like one of those like chauvinist male supremacist fucking yeah. ethno nats. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's a, a Norse neo pagan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Uh, yes, I have been, and yes, I have been. Yes, be over. Um, I have been to both of those. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I know of this dude just because of the male supremacy stuff. I've never, I've never even heard about the violence is golden fucking thing. Um, but I am going to actually give it a read. Um, sites, he cites Orwell even. It's, I'm telling you, it's actually pretty good. And it's, I mean, it's not the best piece, but for like a normie, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, um, some of originally published on Arthur's Hall of Viking Manliness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking, he's, he's a wild dude, man. Oh. oh. He's a wild cat, man. But I'm telling you, it's a great piece of, it's a great piece of, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's uh, it's it's worth a read. Yeah, I li I like some of the stuff he says about cops and proxy violence via complex societal norms and offloading this into ordered violence, which then gives way to disordered violence. No, this is this isn't terrible. He seems like a piece of shit, but this isn't terrible. Yeah. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that a look. Uh, so he's a lot yeah, of he guy? started being controversial way back in the day because he like wrote articles against uh, against like gay pride and stuff and was like coming out and just like calling people the F word and stuff being like, like, why do you have to be like this? Like, you don't ha you can be gay and still be like manly or something. He, I don't he, know. De he describes himself as an androphile. <laughs> he 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 f he says that gay refer uh, has an effeminate tonality to it, and that you can um you can have romance and sex between masculine men, and not have it be gay. Right? Like I'm not. This is okay. So here's his own words. Here's his own words. I am. <laughs> I am. I am, wild, I am not gay because the word gay con uh, connotes so much more than same-sex desire. The word gay describes a whole culture and political movement that promotes anti-male feminism, victim mentality, and leftist politics. He tr uh, he has said that he transcended both that identity and that sexuality. But he does fuck and he does date, love, and fuck men. I'm telling you, man, it's it's fucking. He's an interesting cat to look into. As so long as you're someone like you yeah. that isn't like swept up by crazy <laughs> shit like that, like yeah. don't funnel don't funnel anybody to him. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm, I'm actually yeah. I'm gonna. There's actually he seems he seems to translate all of his shit. 
like mm-hmm. his, his books go into French, Portuguese, German, Spanish. Like he makes sure that they're accessible. Like he's he's clever. He's not fucking. He he, he knows what he's doing, um, which makes him more dangerous. By the way, <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna read some of his stuff. Actually, this would be fucking funny. If I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get high one weekend and then just read a bunch of his shit. <laughs> and uh and uh i'm not into dudes but he's uh he's he's a, he's a looker um i would fucking masculine looking dude man. i wouldn't describe him as a here is anybody uh, okay i'll i'll um here we'll get this fucking, is he's scary looking this is his this is his like press photo okay this is this is what he distributes Just shatters the idea of like what is what like a gay dude is. You know what I mean? Like the stereotypical gay dude. <laughs> uh for a few years he was obsessed with fraudage as the only true masculine sex because you're facing each other the whole time. Jesus Christ. Um, Someone says doesn't do cocaine, just likes the way it smells. Uh caboose, yeah, I know, right? Did that gym dude from that video fucking like read this dude? Um, and who, um, who fucking, yeah, I was going to address that. Allie, hi, America. Is not there a strike on Twitch today? Um, well, you know, I wasn't even going to do fucking that cupcake. I was just going to say that like, okay, so one, I started my stream yesterday. Um, two party rules apply until I go to sleep. It's not the next day. And three, we are taking tomorrow off. Um, of course, we're just gonna have a good movie night on on Discord, but we'll be uh, we'll be off of Twitch, um, so that counts. Hashtag I did something. Um, oops, I didn't mean to hit that. Um, yeah, no, fuck that. I'm streaming. <laughs> it's not gonna do shit. It's not gonna do shit. Fucking Twitch has been. Twitch has shown that they don't give a shit, right? You know what people are mad about. Like, all I heard was it was something about BIPOC. That's all I heard. Oh, no, it's the hate raids. It's, it's, I don't know. It's the, I I don't get it. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, hate raid me. Like, um, well, I mean, I understand. I understand. See, that's the thing is it's mostly bots. Like, there's been a few asshole streamers who have participated, but for the most part, it's just automated. It's a series of scripts and bots. It's bot swarms that search uh, v- uh, search for the tags. So they look for like uh, BIPOC LGBTQ or LGBTQIA or yeah. plus or whatever, um, feminism. Um, and then they raid in. And they do like a thousand follows. Um, they'll swarm your chat with like, you know, Unicode versions of the N word or something getting around uh, the auto mod system. And like that's you know, and I get, I get that like I mean, there's one um, black uh, female black game streamer that she spent of a four hour stream, she spent three hours having to deal with fucking repeated raids, like just they were just swarming, like they just whatever they did like to to negate it, they'd literally just tweak it really quickly and then fucking do it again for three fucking hours right it's like you know you're just disrupting the stream and that's the whole point of it is to drive them off the platform and to silence them um but i mean we've had like other i know some people trans people get it uh get it as well it's marginalized groups it's fucking it's black female lgbt fucking trans it's it's just that's it's the marginalized groups that are getting it um and I understand that it's it's about silencing them. It's about driving them from the platform. And I mean, I know a couple of streamers who have had it happen to them, and we've had a couple of them. And but I know, like, I mean, no offense, but I know what I'm doing. I shut it down really quickly. It's like you just turn off your fucking alerts. You have your follow, uh, your uh, your chat set correctly, and you just fucking it just goes away, like right away. Like you just shut it the fuck down. Um, but like also. Twitch's platform is shit in this regard. It's way too easy to create bot swarms on Twitch. Right. Like, this is... Yeah, I mean, I I could see how it would be annoying, but, like, I don't know if we need, like, a day of silence. Like, just cut your shit on the... Cut your alerts off and cut your shit to fucking emote-only mode and... 
Um, yeah, be over there. There's, there's continue, a couple of... Charlie fucking Mike, you know what I mean? Continue fucking mission. Um, like, co-carnage, who, I mean, admittedly, he's a cisgendered, heterosexual, white male, right? But he's also one of the larger streamers on the platform. Twitch pays him to fucking stream on this platform, mm -hmm. right? Like, having 12,000 people in his chat for just an afternoon fucking stream is not uncommon. Like, that's just average numbers for him. Um, he has been on this platform for years since like the Justin TV era. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and he has addressed it. He says, you know, he said it won't do anything. He said, I know how Twitch operates. Um, part of his contract is that he, he, he stipulated, um, I will not be silent. You will not infringe upon any comments or ideas or thoughts I have against twitch if i want to criticize you even though it may harm your business practices that's in the contract he made sure he could do that um right so he you know he's straight up said he said he will not do anything with twitch he said i've been here for years it, it, he's seen he's seen these days of silence come and go numerous times he said in fact what you need to do is you need to be on the air talking about it he said it's the exact opposite of what you're attempting to do because the groups that are being harmed by this, the groups that are actually going to participate, because I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, and everybody on my channel knows what that means when I say that. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here. This won't account for a, sm but a small percentage of the Twitch streamer population. All right, this will not hurt Twitch. The only way that you could make a day of silence count is if like 50% of the streamers went offline all of a sudden. Big names. Big names. Right? You need to actually take away their viewership and make this noticed. Otherwise, you're already a marginalized percentage of the community. Right? Like, where it's 1% of their streamers, basically. If that. Shit, like, just fucking... Twitch politics in general is yeah. a small percentage. It's not going like, to you know what I mean? Like, the overwhelming majority of people are just playing games or like hanging out and just chatting, doing weird shit. Yeah, like the the what needs to happen is more coverage. They need to be shamed into doing something. They need to be fucking like have that heat on them. Just like uh, Reddit didn't do shit about shit for years. They had a pedophile problem. Right, like they still kind of do, especially internal right. in, the, in the internal corporate structure for sure. Fucking, um, fucking Magic the Gathering, Hong Kong. Yeah, like, and they didn't do shit for shit for years. For years, we were sh screaming about shit. Somebody finally got CNN's attention, and Anderson Cooper takes to the fucking nightly news and says Reddit is is harboring pedophiles. Guess what? The next day, those subreddits were shut the fuck down. We'd been bitching about it for years. They didn't do shit. Anderson Cooper takes the nightly same, news and it's says, "Kind of the same thing that, like, you know, the you know people talking about, like the the oh, how do I? Put, I'm trying to think of the right word. Like the the people doing hot tub streams and shit. Like no one's gonna give a fuck until CNN comes out and it's like, are your children watching, mm -hmm. you know, hot tub streams? And then then all of a sudden Twitch will be like, oh shit." We need yeah. to be consistent with what we're doing, right? Anderson Cooper needs to fucking take to the nightly news and say Twitch Twitch is encouraging racists or Twitch is harming fucking vulnerable people by empowering racists or something like, right? Like some sort of CNN inflammatory headline, right? I'm not I'm not clickbait writer number 4, so uh, you know, I'd have to work on it. But yeah, that's what needs to happen. And the only way to get that to happen is to get more fucking attention on it and more people talking about it. And just shutting up and going away is exactly what they want to do, want you to do, by the way. These people who are doing this want to take away your visibility and voice. You're literally giving in to their demands. I think it's bad, bad praxis. I think it's it just is a is a critique as a, a as a political mm -hmm. organizer and as somebody who's done direct action in his life. I think this is counterproductive. I think this is going in the opposite of direction of what you should be doing. Um, but again, I could use a night off, and I enjoy doing movie streams with my community on Discord. So, hashtag yay. Um, 
but you been you've made that point in a couple communities and been aggressed on for it. Oh, I'm not I'm not surprised. Fucking I'm not surprised at all. And I you fucking bring it. If you fucking like any of these idiots want to come at me, come at me. Like I I don't think it's gonna it's it's not gonna do shit. Like this isn't the impetus for the change. If the change is happening behind the scenes, this isn't this isn't the cause. So even if change happens and people are like, ooh, the hashtag campaign worked. No, it didn't. That wasn't that wasn't the driving cause. Um it, it's it's a yeah no i mean like i i didn't know i didn't know it was bot accounts to that level i mean it yeah. does i mean that would fucking suck i mean like I, I mean just to be fair like that that would suck it's a pain in the <laughs> ass and i mean there's also like i could you know i don't need to be like if i you know a, i mean honestly i think this is just like the wrong way to deal with that shit it's not how you deal with bullies right you don't fucking get together as a community and then like create a day of silence and shit it's the same thing with like when someone comes in my chat and you ban them, they make a new account and they come right back. But when you time them out, they leave. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing where it's like when you give the bully that power, like you kind of just feed into it. You make yourself a victim in that way. Um, because yeah. you prove that their tactic is working mm -hmm. against you. Yeah, I mean, whereas that's, like that's, you know, you don't feed the trolls. I guess is that is literally you know, the that is the it. stated goal for a lot of this. Like, a, uh, everybody, come on, the the God, I'm gonna sound so fucking lefty on this one, but it's true. The cisgendered heterosexual white male video gamer gate fucking platform that is Twitch. That demographic wants their fucking platform back. They want the black women off of their platform. They want the trans people off their platform. They want the queers off their fucking platform. And they know how to do it because fucking too many of us are way too comfortable in our, our fucking safe spaces and our, our little safe havens. And all they need to do is come in with a thousand bots and call you the N-word or fucking tranny a bunch of fucking times and you take a day off. You literally confirm what they're attempting to do. They're like, we're pretty sure we can say shit in their chat and push them off the platform. And then what do you do? You get off the platform. That seems like the opposite of what you should be doing. The opposite of, of what would work. What needs to happen is more fucking people, more BIPOC people, more trans people, more people from the queer community need to come and sign up for Twitch and start streaming. You need to show up in numbers. You need to show up in fucking droves. Oh yeah, you were you were uncomfortable with 1% of your population of streamer being that? Well, congratulations, now we're 8%. Are they really a minority? I guess I don't go into the gaming spaces that often, but it seems like Twitch politics is overwhelmingly left wing. Oh, dude, they, 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 LGBTQ it's, stuff. It's, see, know? the gaming space is accounts for like 95, 97 percent right. of Twitch. And I would assume that's mostly just like white dudes. I don't know. I don't fucking I don't is. watch that. Shit, no, it is. It's, it's white dudes. Yeah, it's white dudes. There's there's white chicks, but it's, it's white dudes. Yeah, that's that's who streams on Twitch. Um, only the sports Damn game. It. Am I enforcing this? Oh, oh uh, no! Only the sports games seem to have people of color. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell no! The gaming space is entirely white and straight. Even the deb debate space is highly uh, favor center. Uh, favor center to center right. Um, I've, I've yet to see any right wing. I'm, there's I, really. Oh, dude. I mean, are you, dude? One of my first fucking. Well, I guess it's. What, I mean, I guess it's like. How what, do you, I mean, one of how my, do you define that? Though, one right? of my first brigades was by um, Crooked Nose Media. Crooked Nose Media, that's great. Uh, yeah. No, I just mean like on the debate panels and stuff, they're begging for conservatives because they can't find them on the platform. Oh, they exist. They just don't participate. They, they do. They exist in hundreds and thousands of fucking viewership numbers. Right. I just meant in the politics. Space. Yeah. Well, the politics space they don't they don't participate. Play. That's yeah. that's that they're not interested in debating some fucking BIPOC queer person. They've got five, eight, nine, twelve hundred viewers already of angry white gamergate type fucking twenty something chuds who are willing to brigade in and disrupt. And I've seen it firsthand. Right? Like that's 
Yeah, like that that dude, that's the Twitch population by and large. And if you're like, even if you're in the like gaming space, dude, the, the default Twitch user is kind of chuddy to start with. Right. Yeah, no, I've like, I, I'm pretty new to Twitch, even though I started streaming, like you would think I would get into Twitch before streaming, but like, it was just like, hmm, YouTube or Twitch? Well, obviously I'm not going to grow on fucking YouTube. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you know I mean? it, it is legitimately like, it, it, even the like gaming spaces, like perfect example. All right. Perfect fucking example. You want to, I mean, this is somebody like Jim Sterling, you know who this is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's transitioned into non-binary femme presenting. I forget all of his descriptors or her their their descriptors. Sorry, I've watched Jim Sterling for years. All right. Fucking forgive me. It's gonna take a minute. Um. Even before the transition, Jim's streams were tenuous. Let's just put it that way. Post transition, I mean, he's got mm. a fucking audience, right? Like Jim infamously does not advertise. Um, they don't like. They do not like the c- community supported the whole fucking thing, um, the whole way through, and so like they have a significant community, like you know, hundreds of thousands of people type thing. Even Sterling like these brigades are in overwhelming size for them to deal with on stream Mm. like yeah it's it's a pain in the ass for for a lot of people and i get it i just think they're handling it incorrectly that's all there okay um (laughs) um Jim Steph as a name. Is that is that what fucking they're going by these days? I uh, again I watched them for years, okay? Like it's going to take a minute. <laughs> it's going to take a minute. Um but yeah, like it it is it is super toxic as a platform. It's like it's the internet. It's the internet. Right? It's the fucking internet, right? Like that's it's first and foremost, right? And then Right you know james stephanie sterling okay thank you rev um so like it's it's already pretty fucking toxic um and you know you throw in some marginalized groups and some people who look have more trauma than you and i have in this regard right and you know, you can do some damage psychologically. Like, right? I was just trying to build a community. I was trying to fucking do X, Y, and Z. And like every stream, I've got a thousand bots calling me the N word. Right? I got a thousand bots telling me that fucking trans people should be beheaded. Right? Shit like that. Like, it just, it gets old really fast. And, you know, why bother? But that's the goal. That's the fucking point of it is to shut you the fuck up and make you go away. And so like, this is standard bullying tactics. Like this is old school bullying, just repackaged for an online space. And so the only way that you can do that, you can deal with that is to stand the fuck up. If they want to take away your visibility, if they want to take away your voice, then you yell louder and you make yourself more visible. That's how that shit works. Um, I don't know if we lost that lesson between generations or something, but that used to be a lesson that, like, you know, oh, God, forgive me, but fathers would pass down I to think, sons I, and shit I mean, like that. I think it's something that happens almost like, I, I don't want to, like, <clears throat> come full circle to, like, proudly radical and, like, anarchy stream, right? But I wonder if it comes from, like, statism, right? Like, I wonder if it comes from, like, disassociating, like, the responsibility <clears throat> that you have or you have as a community or with social capital or you have as an individual and saying, like, the state apparatus or the corporation will fix this for me. Yeah. You I know mean, what I mean? We, like, are, it, it we seems... are relying on Twitch to fix this. 
Right. Like, why do we? Why would we rely on Twitch to fix this? They're not going to fight back. Yeah. Until until all sorts of bullshit, fucking blah 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 blah. Um, you know, they're not going to. So yeah. Um, Gemma pointed out the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of smaller streamers thrive uh, uh, not on the basis uh, or, or not, uh, thrive or not on the basis of community engagement. The chud storms are the effect of driving audiences away. Um, and Viva said, isn't that the whole point of like pride parades and stuff? I'm here. I'm queer. Deal with it. All right. Get used to it. Mm. Right. Like that's that. Yeah, that was that used to be the point. <clears throat> Yeah. that's another conversation that can get me in trouble um but um it's yellow is correct the problem is the pride parades came after all the broken glass um oh. yeah i don't know i mean like I, I mean i feel like the best thing you can do in that scenario is is you're just gonna have to fight through it yeah i i i i think so too uh, Caboose said, my lesson when I was bullied in school was ignore them or and go somewhere else. I wouldn't be surprised if others of my generation and later have had similar lessons. Mm. Yeah. My generation got a different lesson. And the ones above me got different lessons as well. Um, yeah, my, my generation got beat his ass and I'll be proud of you when you come home suspended. Yeah. That I'm sorry. That's, that's the truth. Like the millennials on up like it was we got kick his fucking ass and we'll buy you ice cream <laughs> pretty much i mean but at the same time the system was different too right like the teachers kind of accepted that to a certain extent and yeah they and it is that. true caboose said we were we were taught don't defend yourself or you'll get in trouble Right, exactly. Like when we went to school, when you and I went to school, I mean, I was kind of on the cusp of this changing being, you know, almost 31, right? I was on the cusp of this changing where like people were getting in trouble for fighting, for defending themselves. But even then it was like, you know, like if you fought a bully and like went home, you'd come back to school and the teacher would be like, yeah, 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 here's the homework. Here's what you missed, yeah, right? Whatever. Like, l let's get you caught up. And now the teachers are like, hmm, problem child. Yeah, uh, Kvass, uh his story, his story said, uh, Gemma said that they were, her parents were too libby for kick his arse. They were more turn the other cheek and don't rise. Um, Rev said, you get detention at a pizza party. Um, Kvass said, I was the same way. They lol, they suspended you for what? Fuck it, let's go fishing. Um, you know, yeah. Um, at, I think I think this is a discussion of masculinity too, right? Um, but like the di understanding the difference between like the fact that masculinity isn't male, you know what I mean, and and understanding that there is a difference between toxic toxic masculinity and like not going too far in trying to drive away that toxic masculinity, right? Like you know, fighting in the defense of something right is is honorable and is good, See, right? And I think sometimes we've lost that. Because we've had so many people being so fucking toxic for so long Ugh. that uh, we'd rather just get rid of the fighting, and it's like, well, you can't. Yeah, see, and cat like that's, dude. I've I've seen so many old timers fucking lament that. Cat said, uh, "See, the problem in my area is if you beat him too bad, you got to worry about guns." I've seen so many old timers lament that. Like once upon a time, that wasn't a thing. Really, yeah. it really wasn't. Like that's that that changed like a couple generations, um, like that was you, you know you fucking throw down and that's you you take your beating or you fucking dish out a beating, um, but you leave it there. Um, that changed somewhere along the way for certain areas of the country for sure. Uh, definitely like centralized. Yeah, like, like I definitely areas. had experiences that like would sound wild to people that are Gen Z, right? Like I remember I had a school bully, um, and he was a lot smaller than me, but like I just didn't I didn't really take up for myself because I was just like not that type of person. Like I did, but I did verbally. And um and I got like under his skin and he wanted to fight me and I was like, dude, I'm not gonna fight you. And um our neighbor called the cops because he was like in my yard trying to fight me. And the cop showed up and pulled boxing gloves out of his trunk and had a pair of boxing gloves and gave them both to us. 
right? And like, and we and we fought there with a cop watching. Uh, you know what I mean? It was like it was just a different time, even though it was not that long ago. I, you know, yeah. And I don't know if that's better. I don't know if we're better or worse for having left that behind. In some ways, I think we're much better, and in some ways, I think, I think we threw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I feel you on that one. And as for whoever fucking, I don't, I didn't even recognize the name. Su- oh God, Supreme Elohim. Um, fucking humans are tribal as fuck. I feel that trying to blame statism is lazy analysis. I mean, I'm not going to put words in fucking Scott's mouth, but I'm going to put words in fucking Scott's mouth. Um, it's the psychological element and the sort of derivative causal effects of statism. Right. Yeah. It's not like I'm literally blaming statism. I'm just saying that, like, as we take more aspects of our life and and shuck them off to larger bureaucratic entities, I wonder if we lose some of that sense of community and that social capital and that sense of individual responsibility. Right. Yeah. It's not that I'm like actually thinking that like the state is like taking this up to like turn to feminize our boys into little girls. Like it's not, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, nice be over. Um, Kez, Ireland was like that when I was growing up. I've punched Irish cops for being cunts for fuck's sake. Uh, Kvass said, uh, or I'd come home with my entire fist bruised and get things like, just be careful, you can easily break your knuckles at your age. Uh, right. <laughs> Rev said, I once hit high sc- oh, once I hit high school, I'd roam the school and terrorize any bullies I found. The three or four students that were bigger than me would always have my back if necessary. Um, Kez agreed with Kvass, saying, yeah, I got the knuckle warning too. Um... Uh, uh, Rev said point of privilege Uh, Fuck you Rev Rev said point of privilege (laughs) The word tribalism is racist It's called sectarianism (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit He's not wrong but shut the fuck up (laughs) (laughs) I remember when we got that uh, Fucking Neil with that (laughs) Still makes me laugh (laughs) Fucking don't say that word then he says that word it's like whoa 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 don't say that word man (laughs) again like (laughs) it fucking broke Uh, oh fuck i was talking to emma about like about my political philosophy and uh and like he randomly hopped in chat when i was talking to emma and uh and was just like trying to debate me and i was like dude like we were having a good conversation what are you doing uh, ironically, uh, Kat said, ironically enough, being one of the few guys that who could actually throw hands was one of the most dangerous roles in my school. No, that's, that's, that's actually traditional. Um, dude, MMA fucking fighters, fighters constantly are like having to like engage with idiots who are trying to test their metal against them. Right. Like Mike- to me all the time. Cause I'm six, five, like I can't yeah. go to a bar. And stay too late, or like some little guy wants to fight me. Yeah, Mike Tyson had people. Come, that's why boxers and fighters have bodyguards. It's because people are constantly coming up to them, trying to fight them. It's fucking ridiculous. Pe- humans are stupid. Um, bye, Kaz. Um, you bob and weave and drop someone, and you fucking know you're in for jumping your guns. Jesus Christ, L.A. is fucking crazy. East L- right. East LA. East LA, by the way. Um, fucking East LA. Jesus, goddamn Christ. Um, do you believe that bullies are born from bullies? No, no, I don't. I mean, no. some 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 people are gonna have some components that they were born with that predispose them to a particular set of behaviors and or outcomes, for sure. But no. right. some people are gonna be born with personality trait agreeableness and very low. Uh, you know, very low p- percentile of personality trait agreeableness. Yeah. But those people can just as easily become lawyers. Yeah. But for the most part, <laughs> yeah, high trauma from home life, anxiety issues. Yeah, it's it's environmental factors that generally yeah. shape that behavior pattern. Um, Chutoy, also add in being tall, heavily built guy. Yep, I'm 6'3". So many shorties trying to fight me. It happens all the time. Yeah, and another big thing, this is one of the big things for, like, 
one of the big arguments for having fathers in the home, and I'm not making any judgments against other non-traditional families. I just mean when you have a child, right? Um, is rough and tumble play. Rough and tumble play has a really big role in that. Okay. Children that don't engage, don't get a lot of rough and tumble play engaged, and anybody can do this, right? It doesn't need to be a father. It just traditionally, without any active thought, tends to be the fathers that do this. Um, rough and tumble play between the ages of like two to six is like a, a lack of that. We've seen a remarkably strong increase in violence towards other people. It's really weird, but like basically to keep really? your kids from being a bully that fights people, you have to kind of fight them. No, that makes sense. You teach them empathy. Yeah, it you makes sense. Kind of I was going to say, there's an empathetic response. You understand what it means to be hurt. Right. And traditionally, mothers don't, you know, they don't, you know, they don't tend to like it when the dad is throwing the two year old three feet in the air or like wrestling their kid. Right. But it's, you know, if you understand that that's an important part of children growing up, you know, whatever family structure you have, know that you need to test your child's boundaries and, you know, give them an elbow every now and then, but playfully. And, and it, it teaches them empathy and it teaches them like how, how they hurt other people and how to engage in that kind of like fair combat and funness. That's hilarious. Both my parents did that. Like mm. My mom, yeah, and it's my mom. It's one of the reasons why you see increased violence in people that don't have I've fathers. Never, at I've all. never been enough. I've never been in a fight. Tumble play. Both of my parents did that with me and I've never been in a fight in my life. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, that there's a corollary. Um, yeah, no, it's, you know, yeah, I was, I grew up like that. That was fucking, <laughs> both my parents and fucking, like, wandering around, like, like I've just said before, like, we literally owned a mountain in Vermont. Like, that was our property. Like, we owned a fucking mountain. Um, and, like, I grew up fucking falling off shit, hurting myself. Like, that was, that's basically my entire life is finding new creative ways of hurting myself. Right? Like, I, I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody. Like, don't. Like, it sucks. <laughs> like, why would you want to do that to somebody? Right? Like, knock that the fuck off. But, yeah. Um. Yep, yeah, had that with my dad, my uncles, and stuff broke, t uh, and stuff. Broke three, uh, four teeth out of my uncle. Yep, yeah, viva. Woo. Um. One, well, wait, wait, chew toy. I won my last fight by 100 meters. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. Like, why the fuck did they have to make me to do that? Dude, I've talked about this before, that, like, I, the last thing I want to do... Like, I'm armed to the teeth, motherfucker. Like, best believe. Um, but the last thing I want to do is ever have to pull that trigger. And I know my own psyche well enough, after enough training and life experience and introspection, I know what my reaction would be if I were put in that position. I'd be angry. I'd be pissed that you fucking put me into that position. That, like, how dare you make me do this? This is the right. last thing I want to fucking do. And you fucking made me do it. I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be... I, I know where the line for self-defense is. I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be broken up about it. I'm going to be pissed that you pushed me over that line. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If I hit you, you've earned it. Exactly, Kavas. Like it takes a, it takes effort to make Kavas aggroed. Yeah. Like I don't. You got to put me in a fucking corner to ma put me in that position, right? Like I, I'm not. I'm gonna give you as much fucking room as you need. But if you put me in that position, I'll do what it takes to protect myself and the people around me. Yeah. Even Jonko Willick or however the fuck you say his name, talks about how, like, he'll run from most fights. And you hear that from a dude like that, like this, you know, like, hyper fucking, like, <laughs> wake up in the morning, eat meat kind of guy. And you're like, what the fuck, right? But he's not wrong. It's like, it's not worth it. And I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Like, the only time I'm going to fight you is if you grab me. Um, Yeah, like, I mean, and J Jocko. Um, Jocko Willick is a former Navy SEAL, folks. Like, you know, he's done some shit for sure. 
right? It just comes with the job. And that's a dude who that will tell you straight to your face, like, I'm going to run from the fight if I can. Like, why would you ever seek that out? The people who seek that out are broken. That's it. You see, you see a dude in a bar fucking aggroed out and trying to fight people and shit? That dude's got issues. He's got damage. Right? Like, that's, that's just... That's a human being that needs a therapist, basically. <laughs> like, they, they got some shit they need to work out. Like, I, I've, like, I, I don't, angry drunks, like, that's the thing. Is like, you know, if somebody can have, like, a, a, you should be able to down as much fucking alcohol as humanly possible, and you should not want to swing at people. That's not a normal reaction. That's you having baggage. That's you needing to work some stuff out. Um, the alcohol just took off the inhibitions. That's all. Um, yeah, belligerent drunks are fucking just bullshit. Um, what kind of drunk are you, Scott? Um, I'm a talkative drunk, and I'm a lovey-dovey drunk that gets really handsy. I'm a uh, I I'm I'm a streaker. I can't keep my clothes on. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them. Fucking three drinks. Yeah, no, I, I try not to drink too much because if I get like really drunk, like I tend to like I tend to like start like not like where I'm gonna like sexually harass somebody or something, but like I will sexually harass somebody. When I I'm sorry, <laughs> touchy like, feely. Like, you know um, what I mean? Like I don't have any control, man. I'm like I don't do that around people because if I get drunk, like I'm gonna get handsy. Uh, the minute someone tells me they get angry or sexually weird on X drink, I know uh, no to never tr uh, to to never truly trust them. Says so cat. Sorry about that, cat. Um, I don't get sexually weird. Like I just get huggy. Like I, I start like slapping people on the shoulder or like hugging them. Like I'm not like groping anybody or anything. You pull the trigger, simp. Your main simp said, I, it's 3 a.m. Some dude breaks into your house. You hold him at gunpoint, tell him to leave. He doesn't leave and starts to reach for his pocket. What do you do? You pull the trigger. Yeah. You don't, I think, don't I think this question was best answered very, very early on by uh, John Locke in the second treatise on government. Right. He talks about like a thief in the night in your home is at a state of war. Like you don't have the responsibility at that point of trying to understand the mental state of that person. They have placed them in a state of war with you. Despite the fact that they may be unarmed or despite the fact that they may not have the intention to harm you, you don't have, like they've put themselves in a position where like you don't know what their state of mind is. You don't know whether or not they're gonna harm you. Nor and do you so, bear the responsibility to find that out. Right, they've put themselves in a state of war. It's no different than an enemy army putting themselves on your border right it's like if 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 you know what i mean if mexico put fucking thirty thousand troops on the border of texas like we're gonna have some fucking questions real quick right yeah they haven't actually done anything they, they haven't hurt anybody they haven't killed anybody doesn't matter but it's like though. dude that's a fucking declaration of war yeah like the, your intentions have been stated you broke into my house at 3 a.m job done yeah um and uh, hey, Capone, uh, there's a big difference between getting into a scrap. Oh, and uh, Capone, also, there's a big difference between an American and being in the UK. This is one of the things that being an American, we're a little more prepared to discuss because we have a little more reality for this situation. This is the truth of the matter is it's kind of the Wild West a little bit. Like, comparatively speaking, you know, the UK, it's like a Japanese person walking down the street in the middle of the night with, the, like, money out and shit versus walking through East L.A., right? One of these situations, you have to have way more um, situational awareness and experience to be prepared for, right? Um, there's a big difference between getting into a scrap and being prepared to take a life. I think most people outside of military background don't really understand what it takes mentally and uh, the effects uh, and uh, and about the effects uh, years later. Um, I mean, 50% of the U.S. basically owns guns. And the truth of the matter is, is that private gun ownership in America tends to prepare you better for this than even being a cop. Right? Like this is cops are poorly trained. Private citizens in America take it seriously, by and large, right? We, we I, mean, I, I would say this in that situation. Don't ever pull your gun unless you're prepared to shoot. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, if you pull your gun, shoot. 
Don't think. Don't hesitate. Don't just, do anything. Just do. Don't talk. Pull the fucking trigger. Because you should not have that firearm aimed at anybody unless your full intent is to pull the trigger. The 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 way we used to train it, and Capone, so you know, like I literally like Scott's former military, and I've taught these classes since I was fucking early teens. Right? The the way we used to teach it was don't point your gun uh, don't point your firearm at anything that you're not uh, you're not intending to destroy it's that simple what? also being an american is really different because we have experiences that would seem wild to europeans like mm -hmm. when i was a child my father took me hunting for squirrels and he gave me a 12 gauge and he didn't show me how to properly put the weapon on my shoulder i fired the weapon and I dislocated my shoulder. And my father, having military training, right, popped my shoulder back in, looked at me, grabbed my face, and said, now imagine what comes out the other fucking end. This is not a fucking toy. It's a rough way to teach a lesson, but it taught the lesson, didn't it? I'm going to tell you what, I was really fucking careful about fucking... Uh, where, where the other end of that firearm was placed at all time. I had muzzle awareness like a motherfucker. I, I didn't need that kind of lesson. I was I, I taught the safety classes for our firearms school. Right? Like that's we ran a we ran a firearms academy for quite some time. No, I was time. just shoot I was just shooting buckshot. Squirrel I was fucking, I was a kid. Um, fucking, you, yeah, buckshot for a fucking twelve year old is I mean, it's a lot. I wasn't even I don't even think I was twelve. I might have been younger. Jesus. Um, yeah, I taught the safety classes, like, in, it, it, like the joke was always like when they were te teaching like the CCW classes and stuff like that, um, was that, you know, if you need the safety class, we're going to hand you off to a, a 15 year old. What? The safest person in this entire academy is the, is a 15 year old kid. I was, I taught the safety classes. Um, I had, I still do. I have intense awareness around firearms um you have to um especially if you're going to operate in some of the ways and levels that we did as a family as an academy as you, tr you know private firearms owners like that's yeah like I, I taught the safety classes um we need to bring we need to bring that shit back in schools we need I, to like I start shooting look, in schools either again. get rid of the fucking guns entirely, which I think we can all agree is not going to happen, <laughs> um, or fucking start teaching the kids how to fucking handle them safely and to have the respect for them that they should. Like, the same way that we teach, or we used to, I don't know how that's going anymore, but the same way you used to teach respect about vehicles. It's a fucking multi-ton piece of steel hurtling down the highway at 75 miles an hour, for fuck's sake. Right? Like, you can fuck a lot of shit up with this device right a whole lot more people are killed in car accidents than by firearms right like we should we should be teaching that then if we're not going to get rid of them which we're not so we might as well like teach our youth to respect them and to have the knowledge experience and awareness about those devices and i think we should start younger than a lot of people would be comfortable hearing I mean, I'd also for the record, I've met plenty of people in the military that had terrible muzzle awareness. <laughs> I, I honestly coming from the private sector in this regard, like I've trained with, uh, uh, I've trained with Ignatius Pizza, uh, Piazza, right? Like I've, I've done fucking uh, front sight, right? Like I've, I've done fucking high level shit. Um, I personally, I'm an advocate for the private sector. I think we are some of the best trained, best uh, aware, uh, most aware um, firearms owners in the world, um, including militaries. Um, yeah, I, I really like when done correctly, which I, the people that I've hung out with, which admittedly are some very high level people, know how to do it. I'm, I'm comfortable around them. Um, final question. Um, Yes, Adam, that's exactly, that's exactly it, Adam. Buckshot is that shit they put in bologna when they want to call it salami, right? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Capone said, what, so final question, then I'm out. How many people outside of military background have had, had to actually take a human life? I don't know the statistic on that. Oh, 
Uh, I don't know the statistic on that. Give me one sec. My headphones just fucking came unplugged. Um, but I could probably find it. It's going to be a, 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 a percentage. Um, it's going to be a single digit percentage probably. Um, but when you start considering how many firearms exist in the U S and how many firearm owners exist in the U S that's a not insignificant number at that point. Um, Firearms culture seems very different in the U.S., at least in uh, parts here in New Zealand. Guns are just a thing you use when you need to, I guess. You know, hunting or whatever. There's no, like, NRA-style thing, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, fuck the NRA. I have trained under the NRA. I have taught NRA classes. Um, my stepfather and mother are both lifetime NRA members. I don't know if she's, like, revoked hers um, just because fuck the NRA. My stepfather will go to the grave, though, as an NRA supporter. Um, at 15 in Switzerland, NRA is, fuck, NRA is just a way for them to fucking get money. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a money, it's grift. a scam and a bribery scheme. Yeah. It's um, a fucking grift. In Switzerland at 15, we have the young shooters group where they teach you how to use the army assault rifle. Um, I would start him at probably age eight. That's my number. Um, I would... I would probably make kids aware of firearms before eight, but I would teach them at age eight. Yeah. Um, I also would say do not start with BB guns. No, start with you, real you things. You need to start with firearms that can kill people. Yeah, you need to. You, you, you turn them into toys when you start with, with weapons that don't have severe consequences. Um, yeah, you should scare the shit out of them. I'm not saying like, you know, but you like for the purposes of hyperbolic speech in this conversation, you should scare the shit out of them, right? Like that, that should be a thing that can kill people. Like Scott said, if BB guns are toys. Yeah, you might be able to put an eye out, but I mean, again, they're fucking toys. You need to teach them from moment one. This is something that will end people. Um, Skull Dog, um, the LGBT group, youth group uh, that a youth organization I work with is setting up firearms training. You should see the reactions we get. <laughs> I can imagine. And uh, Skull Dog, if you want to, uh, if you want to send me a DM or something on uh, Discord, I'd love to hear more about that. I'd love to be aware of that organization and maybe support them in some way. I'd love to know more about that. Um, <laughs> Kai Jones Blackwater. Uh, yeah, fuck Eric Prince. Um, I used to like guns, kind of like kids like toys, but after my dad's cousin trained me, I just saw him as a tool like a hammer. See, this is Viva. This is how I see them. I My stepfather is I I entrenched in like firearms culture. I see them as a tool. Um, for me, though we have familiarly and in my house, um, we have quite a collection. Um, but that is from like two lifetimes basically of collecting um but for me if i were just a a, a private owner f a, a pistol a rifle and a shotgun that's it that's all you need and so i i, I would that, that's you just need three really um depending on how big your house is <laughs> yeah again yeah like if you've got multiple but you know for yourself right this is this is all you would need you would need a, a pistol for like an edc sort of situation um you need a shotgun for home defense um and a rifle for like obtaining food right like you hey, could, this is gonna sound strange and weird and like like i'm like some walking dead fan type shit but i promise it's true crossbows are actually really good for fucking home defense um a little too unwieldy for my taste but fair enough to each right. their own. but if you have like children though the danger of, yeah it like, just goes firing it a shotgun it drops and knowing whether drops or not into you're nothing shoot through the wall yeah a fucking crossbow a fucking even you know yeah i get it yeah and it's got major stopping power and it will scare the shit out of any fucking intruder if you put a fucking crossbow bolt in their chest let me tell you they're not getting up um, small caliber weapon trading here starts with uh, starts at ten with high caliber rifles at twelve fifteen for the army assault rifle. Sounds fine to me. That sounds fine to me. I'd push it down to eight, but that works for me. That's that's Amaris speaking of Switzerland. 
Um, yeah, weapons training starts at 10, high caliber rifles at 12, 15 for the army full grade rifles. I think I think a 410 is actually a really good weapon to teach to teach children with. Um I was completely reading something else. What what weapon what platform did you suggest? 410. Oh, okay. Be um yeah, because yeah, it's like it it doesn't yeah. fuck with your shoulder, you know what I mean? It's not too unwieldy. It's it's the right size and but it it has the seriousness of a fucking of Shotgun. a loud powerful weapon. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't, and it and it's just easy to manage. I think a four ten is a great because like a twenty two feels too much like a fucking toy to me. I started. I think the first. Um, I I'm pretty sure the very first um, firearm I ever shot was uh, like um, oh god I couldn't tell you the model, but it would have been like. I want to say, oh, you know what? I think, nope, that's not it. But let me try and find, um, like the Ruger, uh, like I, it's, it's not a Mark four, but it, it's the same sort of platform, a Mark four 22, uh, long, uh, long rifle, um, would have been the very first thing that like my stepdad put into my hand. Um, and like, I mean, he's got, it's probably like a Mark One or a Mark Two, like it's old, right? Mm. Um, but that was probably the first thing that he ever put into my hand, just to experience the the crack, right? Like this is this is what it does, like pop sort of thing. Um, and then I was moved up to a nine mil pretty quickly, a Sig. Um, but most of my time spent uh, uh, firing firearms was spent firing shotguns and rifles. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of fucking shotguns and rifles. Um, I my Mossberg 12 gauge with a pistol grip um, is my baby. Like that 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 puts that's my workhorse. Like if you you break into my house, that's what you could be looking down. <laughs> um, and um, like rifles, I I'm I'm a rifleman. I would have I would have I would have fit in with the fucking Marines. Actually, I'm a rifleman. I I most comfortable looking down iron sights or a scope um but in a rifle oh with a rifle um all of them 35 70 380s fucking like you name it name the caliber you know um 556 five, sure but you know a 380 fucking hunting rifle um puts in work um my favorite is, to this day is a steyer scout 380 yeah, I have a, a a Remington Model 11, which was made in 1948. It's uh, it's actually worth quite a bit of money. Um, it's a mechanical 12 gauge shotgun, and so the barrel actually absorbs the um, the uh, the back blast. Yep, and then uses that mechanical piece to inject the next uh, shell into the into the chamber. And so it kicks like like a baby, and it's actually super. It's actually like one of the fastest firing automatics if you're talking about like accuracy, right? Because oh. the lack of the kick, as opposed to a carbine that we use in modern uh, in modern shotguns, is uh, Him, himself just a big significant difference. Himself, it's called the twenty one foot rule, and any uh, CCW holder is aware of the twenty one foot rule, but you're also ignoring. The fact that uh, you said a blade in 20 feet is more effective than any gun. Only if you know what you're doing. Um, here she is. That is, that is a Steyr Scout 380. Um, she'll put in work. She'll put in work. Um, there is a spare magazine in the stock as well. As you can see, it's a built-in bipod. Um, and yeah, she'll put in work. Um, the Lynx himself, thank you for the follow. Um, I'm sorry, it is 308. Sorry, not 380. Fucking, um... Yeah, Joe, that was what, um, that's what sold me. 
the very first time I saw it was the the integral bipod. I was like, holy shit, this is dude, this is this is this is game changing. Right? Like fucking Yeah, foregrip fucking di- down to a bipod. I honestly um uh, Kat said the amount of people that think they could sprint at a dude with a gun and plunge a knife into them rapidly is fucking laughable. <laughs> I, I, I put a picture of one in the, uh, oh. in the chat, in the voice chat, uh, okay. text channel. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's a classic beauty, man. Uh, Mine's not as clean as that though. Yep. Uh, thank you, Links. They don't they don't make them like that anymore, man. Um. I I just you know yeah like it, it, the truth of the matter is is that like for Americans guns are part of it. It's part of it. It's like cars for car guys. I think is the best way to describe it. Like, if you have a friend that's, like, obsessed with cars, like, there are people like that in yeah. fucking so America about guns. For a lot it's of people, it's just a energy. fucking car. But for some people, they rebuild their car. They tool their own pieces for their cars. They work on their cars every weekend. They think, they sleep, they dream cars. Scott's right. It's the same energy. Um... Skull Dog, I'm a big fan of the 1911. My stepfather owns a Colt 1911 45 caliber handgun that was his uncle's that is an original and went to uh, went into the theater of war in World War II and came back with notches on the wooden grip. It's a um, showpiece. It's it's I, I built a fucking stand for it for him. Um, and it is, you know, it's, it's a museum piece. It is, it is truly a museum piece. It's in excellent condition given what it went through as well. Um, have you ever looked at like, uh, the Reddit forms and stuff on cursed, cursed guns? No, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, it's like the most wildest of like randomly put together firearms and like, it's, it's like a gun meme culture thing. Yeah. Um, this is for anybody who's wondering what the fuck um, Joe is on about the the Mateva semi-auto revolver. Here it is. Um, I love that they they used to engrave right into it. Read the manual before you. Use it. <laughs> like I'd be pissed. I'd be I'd be pissed. Um, if if I were if I bought a gun and they fucking inscribed read the manual into it uh, uh, into it, I'd be pissed. Um. Yeah, yeah, like it, it is. It is a way of life to a certain extent for Americans, um, and I think the active denial um, by uh, let's see, um, cool. Uh, uh, Skull Dog, thank you, thank you for that information, and I'll yeah. Uh, you know, sponsorship and donation. Cool. I'm uh, I'm gonna help them out a bit. I like what they're doing. Um. Oh, uh, I, I, dude, like that's uh, one of the the gun. Okay, so you want to know a moment for the gun community? Was um, what was the what was the name of the nightclub? Um. What do you mean? Hang on. Give me one sec. Uh, Pulse, right? It was Pulse, right? Oh, the Pulse nightclub shooting? Yeah. That was a moment for the gun community. The gun nuts reveled in it. Not the fact that the LGBT community got shot up. No, no. That was an awakening moment for the LGBTQ community. For the most part, the LGBTQ community leans left. And for the most part, they were very suspicious and critical of gun ownership. The Pulse nightclub shooting changed that to a Mm, huge extent. 
gun ownership rates amongst the LGBTQ community after the Pulse nightclub shooting went through the fucking roof. It shot up immediately. Gay dudes and lesbians and trans people were all of a sudden showing up at gun shops and like, I want to learn how to shoot. I want to learn how to protect myself. I want a CCW. That was the that was the moment. That was the pivotal moment in recent history for the queer community in America as far as how they perceived guns. They're like, you know what? Gun owners loved it. Gun shops loved it. They were like, hell yeah, new customers. Dude, dual income, no kids. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you, two dollars. Yep. You ever heard? You ever heard that bit? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's it, that was dude. The dinks started showing up at the fucking gun stores, and it's like you know what? They got cash, and they want to own. You're welcome here. Also, a quick way to make people conservative. It, it honestly, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I would. <laughs> I want my two dollars. I'm dead. Um. Hey, Mossy. Yeah, I, 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 dude, you know, okay, so you know who should be packing heat all the time? Like, all the time? Black, black, male to female trans. Dude, yeah. they, they're, they're, their statistics are insane. Assault, rape, murder, their numbers are through the roof. They're the one of the most vulnerable group, vulnerable groups in the fucking world. They should be packing heat 24-7. Um, yeah, like straight up. I, I, what are you going to do? You going to rely on the cops? How do y'all feel about the cops? Right? Like as leftists is like true dyed in the wool, proper leftists. You going to call the cops? They'll be there in, yeah, you know, maybe 20 minutes. If you're lucky, you might as well call the pizza dude. He'll be there before some of them. Hold on, hold on. Are we talking about average response time? Or are we talking about response time in the neighborhoods that black trans people live in? Yeah, they may they may <laughs> show up. They may show up next week if you're lucky. They ain't show. I, I didn't. I didn't. What, funny thing is, when I was a kid, I didn't know that I lived in the ghetto, and um, the and ghetto? then my, we had some gunshots go off. It was kind of normal, and uh, and my dad calls the cops right. And um, the cops show up the next day in the morning to like ask us about it, and like and like I just thought it was normal, and then I was just like, wait a minute, do I live in the fucking ghetto? Like, <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, all my friends are black. There's only I'm the token white kid in the neighborhood. God damn it, I think I live in the ghetto. <laughs> gun store, gun store, liquor store, gun store. Holy shit, man. Um. Uh, Cupcake said, that's going to be my new chud bait line. Quote, how do you feel about black trans people owning guns? Um, Gemma, You'd be surprised. Dude, the gun? Um, hey, me trans Their me, gun ownership people. is more important to them than their racism. No, no, straight up. Like, <laughs> straight <laughs> like, up. Like, honestly. Like, straight up. My stepfather is like, will straight up. How'd your stream go, me Trey? He is straight up. He will drop the hard R. He will fucking call, call them faggots. But I swear to God, if you walk into the fucking, like, if he walks into a gun range and sees some, like, uh, d someone who is clearly trans and someone who is clearly black and etc etc right he will welcome them with open arms the gun thing transcends all of the bigotry straight up it, it it's that way for a lot of them for a lot of them oh fucking mitre is the first 12 month subscriber look at that fucking mitre is right there Brackle is close. He just got in at the 11 month. He's got one of the, the founder's badges too. Um, but Mitre has the very first fucking sub at 12 months. It's not quite the anniversary. Their, their metricing is weird. But either way, thank you, Mitre. It's been a long fucking run. It's been weird as shit. I don't know what episode we're on now. Um... This will be episode 340 of Proudly Radical. 
not all of it has been videoed. Uh, a lot of that is, of course, podcast and shit like that. But, yeah. Holy shit. Um, and Gemma, I saw you say, like, uh, many of those can't afford it. Um, you, many of those that can't afford it already do, but the affordability can be a real issue. Um, you'd be surprised how giving the gun community can be. Like, honestly, like I said, the gun thing transcends a lot of shit for them. It's, it's weird, but it's true. Um... If you, if you were, if you went to a gun club, you went to a range and you made it known that like you were vulnerable and you needed help and you probably can't afford to buy a new gun right now, I think you'd be surprised what would happen. Uh, I can, I, I mean, I know dudes that would just immediately pull a gun out of their collection and be like, it's yours. We'll get the paperwork done on Monday. So... Yeah, it is. It is kind of insane how, as Kabo said, the gun community can be weirdly wholesome. There, it is. They can be weirdly wholesome. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've said for a while that like, if you want to engage in like anti-racist kind of like, I don't know what the right word for this would be. It's not. It's not praxis, but it's like you know what I mean. Like like engage in like converting racism on the right like one of the best things you can do honest to god is to start defending gun rights hmm? if you can if you can make the argument to conservatives to start defending gun rights of like black people in chicago for example because they love to talk about chicago right and like, and to get rid of these quote lefty gun laws and shit, like that is one of your fucking ends in like, in like making friends and converting racist standard, like GOP chud, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Right. Is like, talk about that is like, is get them to talk about second amendment rights for people in Chicago. <laughs> Or in Detroit or some place that's predominantly black that has a lot of left-leaning gun laws. Because you will bridge so many gaps there by by kind of sneaking in your anti-racist practices through a conversation on gun rights. Honestly, like, I mean, if you've been a longtime member of this channel or you've been around for a couple of months, you've had to have seen it. I do it all the time. I win fucking right-wingers over. Like, they'll come in and literally ask. Like, we have people um, come in and, how do you feel about the Second Amendment? If you go far enough left, you get your guns back. Marx himself was in favor of gun ownership and said, no, uh, firearms and ammunition should not be surrendered, uh, should never be surrendered, and any attempt to do so should be frustrated by force if necessary. Karl Marx was in favor of gun ownership. If you're far enough left, you're pro-gun ownership. It's those asshole Democrats and the centrists who are uh, who are always trying to take your guns and know we're not with them. Oh, all right. Well, I'm cool with that. Now you have a dialogue. Now you have a conversation. It's an in. It's an immediate in in this country. It works nine times out of ten. Honestly, there's very few fucking things that have that kind of efficacy rate when in, in the political sphere of dropping barriers gun ownership is one of them use it um yep cupcake guns for everyone but cops that is the channel policy when people fucking ask like how do you feel who you know how do you feel about gun ownership everybody should get guns except cops <laughs> you see guys i'm not just here to use you you need to use my right wing knowledge yeah, it's I mean you I've know. got secrets to tell you guys yeah, we already <laughs> they've already been taught that one um, I know I know I'm just kidding but uh himself said I just watched a, a vice documentary about 3d printed guns it was great um under no pretense is the leftist come and take it yeah basically <laughs> All right, oh, pause don't talk to the right wingers that 3d print guns all right you've gone too far right you're not going to have a meaningful conversation with those guys. Leave that to me. 
All right. I can do it. I can do it. I would not recommend you guys do it, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a different kind of right winger. All I, right. I speak, like the, I speak enough of their language. You're getting into like sovereign citizen territory and yeah. shit. Like, you need to be careful talking to those guys. I speak their language, but yeah, I would not recommend as a community you guys talk to them either. Be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, fun fact Australia has more guns in private ownership now than after the buyback following Port Arthur. Um, good. I, they're they're there for a reason i i mean we don't like to talk about that openly it's a sensitive topic but they're there for a reason and we all know it so let's just move on past that um i mean a lottery win could set me up with a 3d mental centering printer <laughs> uh viva here <laughs> um those guys take a very particular conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw a video actually of a, a, a fucking female army. I think it was army. Dude, they're, they're fucking fatigues. They're so fucking difficult to tell apart these days. Um, either way, uh, she was responding to some TikTok video about um, this woman saying like, uh, she was complaining about the vaccine shit and mask mm -hmm. mandates and shit and she was she literally said where's the military in all this aren't you supposed to defend us against uh enemies foreign and domestic and she was she was responding to her she's like yeah do you know what it means if the military becomes involved do you do you know, right. are, are you familiar with what martial law looks like are you are you familiar with the suspension of rights that comes along with martial law like, do you are, do you have any concept whatsoever of what it means of us showing up to help you? Right? Like, it's like, Jesus Christ, people. <laughs> you don't want the military on the streets. <laughs> like, it's the last thing you want. We have a very clear division of responsibility for a reason. Uh, our founders did see what happens when the military is on the streets. It's not a good thing. Um, Viva. Uh, when you look at a lot of gun crime, including mass shootings, which, by the way, the definition of a mass shooting is always an interesting thing to get, get into. There's always one thing they always have in common, disenfranchisement. We tackle that. We can have our guns and eat them, too, said Caboose. <laughs> um, yeah, start, talking, uh, start tackling those social issues. And then, I mean, a lot of that just goes the fuck away. But Ma as mass shootings, mass shootings are shootings where multiple people are killed and the shooter was white. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's true. Um, or, or otherwise, or, it's called or, a gang shooting. Wait, wait, wait. Or, it doesn't hit the news. Or brown. Or funeral shooting. Or shooting. or, or um, Islamic, and it's soon to be called terrorism. Um, right, that's terrorism. That's not a mass shooting. Um, and uh, uh yeah, fucking um. I recorded a person mining exploits in Twitch after your stream. Uh, they followed Dr. Bidouin, uh, and I snooped. The person would cause your tab to not load, but I eventually got to watch and recorded what they were doing, uploading two clips to YouTube. One has them scanning channels, and the other shows the tab crash that they were causing. Yogi, I need you to send me that link. Um, I love the infosec opsec that you're doing there. Drop me that link on on fucking Discord, ideally. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Plug me into the, plug me into what you're doing there, Yogi. Um. Yeah. Be over. Yeah. The Qtards think the military's coming in any day now. Fucking. I never know what to think about Q because I don't know how many of them are glowing and how many of them are trolling, <laughs> and how many of them actually believe the shit. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, is it 10% that believe the shit? Is it 90%? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah there's no way to get a beat on them. Right. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, it is, it is true. There's no way to get a fucking beat on them. But I, I, I love, um, I love Q, uh, the Q people much more than tankies 
because at least they're creative and entertaining with their craziness. The tankies are the same fucking, well, Lennon defined this as this way bullshit. It's like, ah, uh, fuck you. Um, fucking hol holodomer, hol holodomer didn't happen, and Kronstadt, they deserved it in Kronstadt, right? It's the same fucking rhetoric I've been hearing for, you know, since anarchists have heard since fucking Lenin artillery shelled the anarchist club of, uh, in Moscow, right? Um, but mm. the, the fucking Q idiots are constantly coming up with new craziness and it's always interesting. It's like Hillary Rodham Clinton is fucking shipping, uh, is, is shipping children through the evergreen shipping container. And it was because of Q that it, they, they, uh, disrupted the GPS guidance system that lodged it in the Panama Canal. As you see, HRC is right in the identifying tag for the evergreen shipping, uh, shipping, uh, uh, uh the ship identification. And see what's going to happen is we're going to open the shipping container live on national TV after the entire globe is paying attention to it. And we're going to see the children that they're shipping in it for the adrenochrome that they extract from them. It's like, I, I mean, you're crazy as shit, man, but holy shit, that was a yarn you just spun. <laughs> like, I, I, mean, well, I mean, even, even when you say like, they believe it, read the reddits of all the kids, spouses, etc. like. Sometimes you read that shit and you're like, that's believable. And then sometimes a lot of those things you read and you're like, you know, I'll take a hundred dollars for things that never happened. You know what I mean? Like there's also people that love to get internet clout saying that their family members believe in shit that they don't believe in. I, you know, I yeah. don't know. I also don't know what level that is. Did you, did you ever see the, uh, Hill, uh, Kuka's caboose is Hillary is a hologram. She died after Trump executed her for her crimes against the U S did you ever re read the fucking Hillary got executed in Gitmo fucking Q shit? It is. Fucking, I, I don't, I don't follow Q. Dude, I'm it's, not going to lie. It's, like I get it in my chat occasionally, but I don't, I don't care to fucking do it. Well, cause another thing, cause someone was saying like, um, like don't like a third of Republicans believe Q is real. Yes. But here's the difference, right? This is not always true, but it tends to be true. The left tends to be smarter. The right tends to be wiser. But there are a lot of fucking idiots on the right. And a lot of those idiots on the right don't know what Q is. When they say they believe in Q, what they think it is is that they think Q just means that Hollywood and the government has a lot of pedophiles and they like keep each other and like they like they they cover for each other. And that's what they think Q is. So like that one third number is including a large group of people that like are don't actually understand that Q is the crazy shit that Q is. They just think it's the pedophilia thing. Oh no, there's definitely they definitely exist for sure and there's they're definitely wild, but I think their numbers are a little overblown. Interesting. Karina's been getting like shadow blocked on messages. Karina just sent me the fucking screenshot and I don't remember this shit. Yeah, it happens to some of my people sometimes. It's cuz she's got fucking comrade in her name. Interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. Um, it's not the first time. Yeah, it's 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 not the first time. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, Joe. I did. I did do that. Um, to be fair. I'm baiting them out tonight because tonight I'm doing a conspiracy theory stream. I mean, I can't yeah, God, fucking open the door anyway, so fuck it. Um, <laughs> I want to see what comes. Fucking, uh, let's see. Oh, did you see that Australian shit? Uh, we got a couple Aussies here right now. Fucking um, Australian police can now um, break into your device, collect or delete your data. Yes, take yes. O take over your social media accounts all without a warrant. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 the, the fucking uh, parliament rammed through a fucking bill in twenty four hours without anybody having an opportunity to say shit. Um, that literally gives police the ability to hack your device, collect and delete data, break into your social media, take over your social media account, do whatever they want with it. 
The all, fucking pandemic just broke all without Australia. A like Australia was fucking normal before the pandemic. Now they're like, now they're like, we have a case of Delta. We're shutting down the entire country. And you're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, fucking Australia just got broken by the pandemic. They just went full blown authoritarian. It's fucking weird. Uh, no, Karina, you're not fully shadow banned. You're still coming up. Um, this is what Q does, says Mitre. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the surveillance legislation amendment bill 2020 gives the Australian federal police and the Australian criminal intelligence commission, three new powers for dealing with online crime. Data disruption uh, uh, gives the police the ability to, quote, disrupt data by modifying, copying, adding, or deleting it. Network activity allows the police to collect intelligence from devices or networks that are used or likely to be used. Uh, account takeover allows for the police to take over control of an online account for the purposes of gathering information for an investigation. You know what, story girl? I'll believe that. It's not like I've followed Australian politics before the pandemic. <laughs> um, the Australian companies are obliged to comply. Um, Australian companies, systems administrators must comply and actively help the police to modify, add, copy, or delete data of a person under investigation. Refusing to comply could end. I uh, could end. Uh, could have one end up in jail for ten years. Um, required ac uh, activities for complicity include copying, altering, deleting data, intercepting and modifying communications, surveilling networks, and changing account credentials. Um, the justification for the bill was that they it is intended to fight child exploitation and terrorism. It's always it's always terrorism and think of the children, right? Yep. That dude child pornography is going to be the fucking downfall of society and not in the way that a lot of people think. Um we we oh god, I'm going to fucking get I'm going to step in it. We overreact and that overreaction is taken advantage of by those in power. They know we overreact. Like they know we lose our shit at the idea of our children being exploited or touched or harmed in any way, shape, or form. And that overreaction is so easy to just manipulate. Think of the children. You know, Apple is happy about this because they're, they're selling a lot of new phones for people that want two of them. <laughs> yeah, show hand over my phone. Viva, Viva said, everyone who disagrees with Australia is uh, will be a pedo now. Yeah. Basically, what do you are you in favor of exploiting children? Are you in favor of uh, of child pornography and exploitation of children? Then why wouldn't you allow this to happen? If you don't have anything to hide, then this won't affect you. Uh, by the way. Though they stated that it's for terrorism and child exploitation, the specific wording of the bill allows the police to investigate any offense which is punishable by imprisonment of at least three years. So, tax evasion falls under that category for Australia. Uh, bankruptcy and company violations fa fa uh, fall under that category for Australia. First, they came for the lollies. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to know who criticized it, Senator uh, Lydia Thorpe of the Greens is the, the, the most vocal person in your country right now who spoke out against this. And like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So Senator Lydia Thorpe is you know, like one of them story girl i know you guys don't want to hear quotes from uh milton friedman but this one's good uh there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program <laughs> it's true it is true it's true fuck friedman but it is true <laughs> fuck you too 
It's <laughs> a good quote. It's a good quote. Yeah, it's fucking. It's true. <laughs> forget it. Forget that it's a good quote. There's a lot of good quotes that aren't true. It's true. That's the fucking problem is that I've seen a lot of those temporary programs that aren't going away. Um, yeah, fuck the source, but the quote's dead on. Um, there are a lot of terrible people that had good quotes. Yep. Uh, they can take my friendship, uh, friendship is magic body pillow when they pry it from my dead cold hands. <laughs> uh... Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Fluttershy's best pony? No, um, fucking uh, Dash. Rainbow Dash. Sorry. Rainbow Dash for me. Yes, the fucking rainbow aesthetic. Blah, blah, blah. But I like going fast. I like I like flying and going fast. Um, so, Rainbow Dash for me. Um, Scott! Scott! Who's your favorite character from uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? What is Friendship is Magic? Is that a specific <laughs> type of My Little Pony? It is. It is actually a specific type of My Little Pony. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Rainbow Dash is the only one I know. Um, isn't there like a Isn't there like a Dark Pony, like a Moon Princess shit? I don't fucking know. Uh, Twilight Prince. Uh, Twilight. Um, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with that one just for the aesthetic. I like um, dark shit. I like dark women. You know what I'm saying? So I'll go with that one. Uh, hey, well, I'll, I'll get you pictures. Is there, is there a black My Little Pony? Like, um, I'll go with that one. Here, here's here's your basic lineup on screen shortly. Um, oh, God. So I think you know which one is Rainbow Dash. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, like, there is, um... I'm going with the purple one in the middle, just because she looks dejected. Here's, here's Nightmare Moon. Yeah, let's go. That'll be mine. If I was ever going to be a brony, this yeah. is who I'm picking. Um, that is the sister of um the other royal i forget what the fuck the other one is it's been years since i've seen any of this shit um but yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know anything about my little pony it's but it's it, 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 but all 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 that we need to do is you just go over to scott's community and bring up the fact that scott was on an entirely uh leftist stream and was talking about my little pony friendship is magic just bring that to the the conversation table and see how that goes over with some of his people <laughs> Yo, give me give me the fucking views i don't care <laughs> at a boy like a proper capitalist um <laughs> fucking uh, as a matter as a matter of fact, I'll put it you just guys just come over on mass, right? And then I'll put it in emote only mode, and then you can like do five dollar donations and your your message will pop up on screen and you can talk shit all you want. Um oh god, Caboose said, I totally don't know that her sister is named Princess Celestia. <laughs> um so yeah, it's it's the white and dark. Um so it's like the sun okay. and the moon. Um, oh no, no, we're going we're going with the moon all day. Yeah. Um Scott's response, donate $500 and I'll even admit it. Um, let's see. Who's, I don't know who this uh, I'm, is. I'm a cheap date. Um, why did uh, MLP actually take off and because it was certainly popular to certain people? Uh, to certain people? Excel, I can't explain that. Um, I, I, I can't explain that, but what I can say is it was for a moment, like forget the fandom, it is just a nice show. Right, it's really well drawn, and it's just nice. The show is nice. Um, it's 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 not terribly complicated. It's not like it, it's got a just a friendly, fucking uplifting, wholesome message for the most part. Right, like in a world of shit, it is kind of just this lovely thing. Right, it, it's you know. So I understand the attraction. I watched it. I want to know what the fuck it was about. So I watched it. I was like, you know, um, I think, you know, I was like, all right. Um, I, it's a nice show. It's a it's a lovely show. 
Um, I get it. But, uh, you know, yeah. Um, a leftist anarch a left anarchist congregation raids Hoppian stream to preach, uh, wait, wait, to preach the tales of My Little Pony. <laughs> uh, that knows too much that I'm a Hoppian. I'm, I'm, I'm worse than a regular ANCAP. <laughs> um, helps that the Bronies started as a 4chan spoof that ended up with a ton of douche bros actually liking the show. Um, uh, it is, uh, yeah, at the point where irony has been oversaturated, like Wes Anderson and stuff. Yeah, I, I get that. Posted links to the exploiter in shared content channel. All right, all right. Um, oh, Jesus, Joe. Um, come on, Joe. Get your shit together in that regard. You knew you shouldn't have. Um... Okay, so this is a recording of the exploit miner. I got their username, Discord address, then admitting uh, them admitting what they're doing in chat and also shows the mining in progress before they stopped and later shut down the channel. Okay, I'm not going to show this on screen just because there's identifying information and shit like that possibly involved. I, and also, I kind of want to keep the, the exploit isolated to a certain extent. Yeah. Can we, like, fucking archive this somewhere? It's on shared content on the Discord server. Yeah, no, I mean, like, can we, like, download and yeah. this, like, now and, like, re-upload it somewhere? Um, I can, uh, give me, give me a handful of seconds here and I will have it isolated on my, ser uh, on my, uh, network server. Um. God damn it, story, girl. As a hobby, and it makes sense that you have at least some interest in Australia. I mean, kangaroos, right? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. And... Done. Okay. They're both, uh, they're both stored locally now. So, it won't be removed off YouTube. Or, I mean, it, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's removed off YouTube. Um, Crystal Girls, never have I seen a fandom which splits so sharply between white nationalists and trans girls after the fact. Um, <laughs> um, for the record, I have no idea what a Hoppian is. I'm all about the wordplay and the anarchism, but mainly the wordplay. Um, yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. Um, yeah, we'll we'll make sure that that continues to exist. Um, and yes, um, if you want to, you know, it's in shared content, Scott. If you want to see it, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, fuck's sake, do not start a war with emus, dude. They lost two different wars with emus. Like, how do you, how? And then the cane toad thing. I, God damn it. Just god damn Australia. <laughs> Get your shit together. Um and now and now you're fucking handing over the ability to fucking apparently hack your devices and change your Twitter posts to your cops. Just saying. Might be time to hmm, have a conversation amongst yourselves. Um Cat wants to know how you feel about avarists. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what that is. I have uh, to Google it because sometimes I think I don't know what things are and then. Oh, no, I'm. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, wait, wait, hang on. I thought I read it wrong. Um, but for a sec, I was like, wait, wait a second. Um, hang on, I'm getting DMs too. All right, well, Joe, uh, you know, um, something. Um, uh, 
Um, so it's okay. I'm I'm reading it now. Yeah, I was that is say, fucking it's, absurd. It's it's one of the is yeah. I was just say it's one of the meme pollen ball ones. It's like fucking what's the <laughs> other what's the other one cat that's like the insane. It's one? like literally like might is right. Um, what's what's cat? You know the one. The the like fuck the uh, fuck the authoritarianism of gravity and shit like that. Like who, what what's that one called? Um. Soulism. Thank you, Cat. Um, yeah, the soulists are even fucking crazier. We'll say this, though. If we have a truly anarchist society that is, like, large in terms of landmass and population, like, I hate to say this because it... Oh, it, gives the, it gives the chud so much armor or so much weaponry. There probably will be fucked up warlord societies somewhere yeah you know what i mean yeah, like like it. like it's kind of undeniable that somewhere will be but they'll have to stay to themselves you, you know what i mean like like somewhere will be those like fucking pirate town places where states reemerge in some capacity Pir especially if you have freedom of movement and association pirates right? were egalitarian or queer and we're largely anarchistically democratic. Just saying. <laughs> they're part. They're part of our team. <laughs> uh, you should look into soulism, though. By the way, it's fucking great. Complete abolition of hierarchies and and like authoritarian power structures, up to and including like uh, gravity. <laughs> <laughs> inertia gravity all of these like dictates of the universe should be abolished yeah <laughs> it's it's generally described as an off the compass left uh leftist position is it like left-wing anarchism plus q like what <laughs> it's it's bench uh, it's essentially like it's highly ego uh like uh egoist um uh i think it used to be called uh, yeah ego communalism uh, is what it was formerly known as, um, but yeah, there should not uh, there should not only be uh, and not only should the hierarchies of state capital and reaction be abolished, but also the hierarchies of gravity and inertia. Um, Solism believes this to be possible by ascending to a higher level of being or transhumanist technology. They believe that the individual is everything, and his ego is the soul, and its desire for laziness, leisure, drugs, etc., uh, should be fulfilled in order for a truly sane society to be achieved. And this can only happen through anarchy. Yep, no laws. I mean, I'm, okay, I'm okay with them having their own little spot. They'll nope. starve to death. It'll be okay. No laws, not even the laws of physics. Yeah, it, it's 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 fucking crazy. It's a meme ideology um but i love it um does anybody want um let's see if i can click okay cool all right it's already fucking they sent me a second one i thought they sent me a second one i was gonna offer something up um but no same one um Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a Capcom. We live in Fabian ideal society, but every year the one percent gets executed and their wealth redistributed to Amaris. <laughs> um, Kai write about pirates, though. Yeah, that's there are people. Um, fucking uh, okay, Kvass. Uh, wait, there's got to be something above this, though. Hang on, let me pop the history. Um. Oh, did someone say pirates? Yeah, we kind of had a thing. Turns out a bunch of poor people who steal a ship get nuanced ideas. Wow, let's get more poor people on our ship and sink the fuck out of the Brits. <laughs> You're not wrong. Sounds base to me. <laughs> I'm just saying, anarchist society will have a Tortuga somewhere. <laughs> Oh, uh, um, somebody gave me a name, uh, of like somebody earlier and I just, I lost it and I don't want to lose it. Uh, somebody gave me a name of a streamer who had like low view counts who I could like raid into and stuff. Just whoever that was, if you're still here, give me their name again. So I don't lose that. 
Um, wait, was Adia fucking streaming? So, so, so Pinko, right? I've tried. I'm still blocked. <laughs> um, yeah, Adia is not live. Like, yeah, like. I was like, what? Sorry. Um, I legit have a Jolly Roger tattooed on my body. I respect it himself. I respect it. Um. Yeah, somebody fucking. Oh, wait, I'm being tagged somewhere. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Boost. <laughs> I'll put it on stream. Bad news, Frank. We forgot to bring the balloon. So, do you see any police around? And it just fucking takes off without the balloon. <laughs> yep. Even the laws of physics. Even the laws of physics. Fuck them. Fuck them all. Um. All right. Oh, God damn it, Twitch. Fucking dude, that stupid prime loot button. Oh, you know what? Why am I? Why have I never done this? Block that fucking element. Create that rule. Done. Is uh, that a thing? Can you get rid of that fucking thing? Yes, you can, motherfucker. Done. Button's gone. I mean, you know, if you have the right setup. Yeah. I just blocked the element. Anytime it appears in the webpage, it'll be gone now. Um... Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Um, yeah, that, um, use, uh, you block, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Use, um, you block origin. Um, if you're like running anything that can run you block origin and then, yeah, you can right click anything on your screen basically and click select block element and you can just pull it. You can create a default rule set for any, any of the ID tags or any of the, the underlying, uh, script that dictates that item and just remove it. I knew there was a reason I made friends with you crazy lefties. Yeah, like that. I, I was like, why have I not done this already? Like, Jesus Christ, Kai. Um, there's even, um, there's even, uh, oh, um, uh, there's even more advanced systems that you can, like, I, I can re-script an entire fucking page. So whenever your, like, website loads, like, I can go through and change all of the stuff. So it's like, if you've got, like, if you refuse to do a dark theme, I can change your website's content. <laughs> so it's a dark theme. <laughs> like, no bitch. That's what I need. I need that in my life. Like, fuck websites so that don't have dark themes. Honestly? I have no room for you in my world if you don't have a dark theme. Yeah. Um, if you have paywall, Amaris, there is actually a script. Um, let me. Here it is. Um, there's a, a GitHub for a Chrome version of the bypass paywall script. That will just bypass paywalls. Yeah. Like, it just... Nope. Um, so, there you go. Enjoy. Imagine enjoying light. I know, right? Um, what time are we starting good movie day? Um, it's always out of date the last time I used it. Ah, it sucks, Amorous. There are other ways around stuff like that, though. Um, good to know, Amorous. I, I use other means. Um, anyway, um... We'll probably start, you know, we'll start a little later than stream time for sure, um, but not as late as Bad Movie Night. So I'm thinking something like maybe 7.30 p.m. Pacific for a good movie night so we can get like a double feature in on a weekday. Um, yeah, I'm thinking something like that, something around that time, maybe Karina. Um...
why is oh are you just you're just hosting me aren't you no oh you're just streaming oh Gemma you're just Gemma is just streaming hashtag twitch do better hashtag support lgbtqia plus streamers but uh and then just a, a, a solid screen of just text <laughs> just using their assets but not actually participating I, you know i kind of respect it like a fucking you know you're costing them a couple of cents worth of electricity somewhere along the way uh oh jesus yeah chaotic mess hey fuck it uh it's getting used either way it keeps it out of the commons uh, let's see what I got. Um, you have D and D seven thirty to ten thirty. Well, you might be able to catch part of the second movie if, like, if we do that. Um, and for those of you, like, yeah, we're doing good movie night tomorrow on Discord. Just look for like voice chat. We'll kick off at some point or another. Um. Uh, yeah, himself. Like, let's see. We'll. We're, we're gonna, I don't know what we'll watch, but we'll watch something. I've got a collection of hundreds of movies that we can pick from, and not all of them are terrible, terrible movies. A lot of them are classic cinema. Um, so yeah, we'll be able to. We'll be able to look into that. And, um. I. You know. I'm just wondering. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to break my rule once. Just once. Um, just because they they showed good faith and they came around and they stopped fucking standing all those idiots. And I, 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 I'm going to do it. Um... Oh, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Gemma, we're doing that instead. We're doing that instead. I like Gemma's idea better. I'm not breaking my rule. <laughs> there we go. No rule break. No rule break. Um... All right, so, yeah, just pay attention to Discord tomorrow night. Like, you'll just, if you want to hang out, we'll, you'll see us start piling into voice chat at some time. It'll be probably around 7, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So about two hours after I would normally go on. Either way, Scott, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, of course. Catch you all later. Hmm...